Madison, Wisconsin. This is not one you'd want to fly by for. This is one you want to stick around and stay the entire afternoon. The Wisconsin Badgers, who like 23rd in the nation, will take on Fresno State. The Bulldogs ranked on the AP poll for the first time since 93. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Camp Randall Stadium. Steve Levy alongside Todd Christensen. For many of you, this will be an introduction to Bulldogs football. And you'll meet Fresno State quarterback David Carr. He doesn't make many mistakes. National anonymity is no longer a part of his resume, particularly after what he did last week against Oregon State. Put together some huge numbers, as you see right there, over 300 yards and four touchdowns. You mentioned the mistake factor. Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator for Wisconsin, made this very complimentary point, that being that that young man does not make mistakes in reading coverage. All of college football buzzing about Fresno State. As for Wisconsin and their offense, eight straight seasons with a 1,000-yard running back, the best current streak in the nation, might be number nine this year. Well, I think one of the things they were concerned about at Wisconsin was who is going to replace Michael Bennett, now the star runner for the Vikings, and Anthony Davis has done just that. You see the numbers right now Steve that is leading the nation in rushing so certainly AD has done his part he could be a star for the Badgers this is Fresno State's first ever trip to Madison Wisconsin and for more on their preparations coming in let's go down to the field and Dave Ryan all right Steve thanks a lot you take a close look at the time it's almost 11 10 a.m. Central that's very important to Fresno State's Pat Hill when he was an NFL assistant coach he knew teams going from the West Coast to the East really struggled with a time adjustment you want to make sure that did not happen to his team today starting Tuesday last week back in California. His team got up every day at 6 in the morning trying to get acclimated to what would be a 9-10 Pacific time kickoff. They got here to Madison early as well, arriving Thursday. Yesterday up at 7 in the morning, an 11-10 walkthrough. That matches the exact kickoff time today. They want to make sure they were totally adjusted to the central time zone here in Madison. We'll see if it pays off. Dave, no matter how much they prepared, they haven't faced anyone like Wendell Bryant and this Wisconsin defense and this Wisconsin atmosphere. The kickoff from Camp Randall coming up. Brian, first back to you. The Fresno State defense known for their hard hitting. They've got some stars up front, but you will see a secondary on display today that Wisconsin head coach Barry Alvarez called as hard hitting and as aggressive as he's ever seen. High praise indeed from the head coach of the Wisconsin Badgers as Wisconsin is set to take the field. They come off that most difficult loss one week ago at Oregon. And there you see Fresno State, America's sweethearts, the country's college football darlings off to the 2-0 start. And Camp Randall Stadium, as always, jam-packed. 77,000 fans will be on hand. The weather's been in and out, 70 degrees, chance of showers. The sun trying to peek through all morning, but it's been raining over the last few days here in Madison. Now, we are just about set for the opening kickoff. Fresno State won the toss. They have deferred. Wisconsin will receive. Brett Visitator is set to kick it off. Nick Davis and Michael Broussard are back deep for Wisconsin. This has all the makings. Visitator's kick. And it will be Davis in the end zone. Out to the 10. The 20-yard line. And Davis is finally tackled down at the 28-yard line. Kendall Edwards brought him down on the special team start. As for the quarterback, that has been a bit of an issue here. Brooks Bollinger has been cleared medically to play. We'll only see him in an emergency. Jim Sorgi will be your starting quarterback for Wisconsin. And the guy to look for here is Lee Evans. Five plays over 28 yards. He is averaging 25 yards per catch. The big the go-to guy now that Chris Chambers is with the Dolphins. And there he is as Wisconsin opens up first and 10 now for the 28-yard line. Anthony Davis alone set back, Sorgi to pass. And complete to Lee Davis to the 40, crosses midfield, where he is forced out of bounds the 49-yard line of Fresno State. Mark Daly forced him out. Great way to start for them. They want to go right to Evans, their big man. He gets him past midfield in the first play of the game. It's a gain of 23 yards on the pass completion. Sorgi gets good protection from these guys, the offensive line. You see Ben Johnson, Al Johnson. Sure, it's a common name, but they are, in fact, cousins. Alan Harper is going to have to have a big game for Fresno State. Their two-time all-wax selection is the man who's going to have to do it in the run and pass game. 
Chad Coons, the fullback, checks in, then goes in motion, spread out to the left. And it's a handoff to Davis, breaking tackles. He's at the 20, the 10. No, they say he was out of bounds. Forced out at the six-yard line. What an offensive start for Davis and the Badgers. It's a 43-yard game. Interesting, the first two plays of the game, we mentioned that Davis was the leading rusher in the nation. Evans was the leading, leading receiver in the nation for yardage. At the point of attack, take a look at Wisconsin. Uh, Davis does a great job of cutting back against the grain and getting to the outside, and that vaunted tackling of Fresno State is poor early on as Wisconsin seems to be running downhill. Brings up a first and goal, 67 yards of the first two offensive plays by Wisconsin. Well, Fresno State really has to suck it up here. First and goal from the five, that's where they spot it. Here's Sorgi, they'll give it to Davis, try on the left side, and he is very close to the goal line or put him just shy of the end zone. Watch the fullback Coons ahead, number 41, as he cuts to the outside. Watch the defender come out. Watch what happens here. Ouch. Look at this. He drives right into the cameraman. If you're a running back, I'm telling you right now, that's what you want in front of you. You want that road grade that clears things for you. Bring up a second down and goal. They've been perfect in the red zone this season. Six for six. And Sorgi going to try to keep it himself. Touchdown! Steve, you had to know that this drive was going to go well for Wisconsin when Davis returns the kickoff six yards deep in the end zone. You say, that doesn't make any sense, but what does he do? He gets them out of good field position. They go with a big pass play. Davis with a big running play. That took all of four plays to get in the end zone. Very impressive drive. Four plays, 72 yards. Sorgi, the better of the passing quarterbacks when compared to Brooks Bollinger, but that one the sneak. And here's Mike Allen on to attempt the extra point. And Sorgi will hold for him. And Allen boots it through. What a start for Wisconsin. One of the things, isn't it fun when it happens, you talk about stars at the top of the show and they come through. That's exactly what happened to Wisconsin. Up 7-0. Back in Madison, 7-0 Wisconsin. For the Badgers, that's the first time they've put up even a single point in the first quarter. And also, the first time this season, only two games in coming into this one, the Fresno State defense has allowed even a single point in the first quarter. Adam Espinosa is set to kick it away for Wisconsin. Bernard Berrien and Bryce McGill are back deep for the Bulldogs. And it's a short kick fielded by Berrien at the 15. Cuts to the middle. Out to the 30, and he is dragged down at the 35. So good starting field position for the Bulldogs. And David Carr will lead Fresno State's offense out. He was second team all whack last year. Through four INTs in last year's opener. After that, 23 touchdowns, just eight interceptions the rest of the way. Take a, look, get, get, take a close look at Jeremy Johnson, their tight end. He is going to change things because he can get downfield. Only 205 pounds, but he runs extremely well. Harris Gaines, the lone setback, Carter's lead, and Park comes out firing, and the receiver, Berrien, could not get inside the defensive back. The offensive line for Fresno State, Mike Stovall, the center, goes by the nickname of Stump. He anchors this offensive line. Of course, on the other side of the ball, number 77, Wendell Bryant, the Big Ten Defensive Lineman of the Year. Seems like he's been around an awful long time. He is good. After the incomplete pass, Paul will come out firing on second down and able to complete. This time, the Berrien makes the inside move and then takes on defenders like Scott Starks head on. The linebackers for Wisconsin, Nick Grison is the first Wisconsin player since Pete Monte in 96 to lead the Big Ten in tackles. He did that a season ago. Mike Eccles is the man they want to replace Jamar Fletcher as their premier cover corner, but take a look at Scott Starks, a 155-pound true freshman out there at the corner, went to the same high school as Jamar Fletcher, and you can see has his number.
True freshman starting at corner in the Big Ten. Wow. That's, High praise. That is. That's good. And it's not as if they don't have depth at the position. This is about Starks' talent. All I remember is Kevin Cosgrove, when we mentioned Starks and having a 155-pounder out there in space, he just rubbed his hands and said, he's going to be good. Looks like they're going to come up just short. We get a good look at it there. Set for a Sports Center in-game update. Here's Brian Kenny. Brian? Steve, Georgia Tech gets Florida State next week. They get Navy today. George Godsey early to carry Campbell. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets on the board, 7-zip. Syracuse leading Central Florida. They're also got a touchdown, 7-0. That's in the first quarter as well. Back to Stephen Todd. Steve, one of the things that the people are talking about that Brian mentions next week is Florida State. I wouldn't say it's unanimous, but a majority of people feel that this is the time that Georgia State's finally going to knock off the Seminoles. Third and one upcoming for Carr the Bulldog. Single receiver out to the right, and Carr will keep it himself and go for the first down. It looks like he should have it. And there is the indication, first down, Fresno State. Let's sit down to the field. For more on the field conditions, here's Dave Ryan. Yeah, Steve, it rained here a lot in Madison last night. A couple hours, probably a couple inches worth of rain, so the turf is very slick. That's a big advantage for Wisconsin. They practice rain or shine on this turf or indoors on artificial surface. Fresno State has not played a turf game since October 21st of last year at Nevada. They have no turf facility at home. They're not used to it, guys. I will watch for that as we watch Paris Gaines approach midfield. He's right out of the 50-yard line. That's very good. That's a very good point, Rhino. And the reason it is is because I really think that one of the issues here is you got to get used to the shoes. You got to get used to the field. And practicing is not the same. You can see right there, Gaines loses his shoe right off the bat. It is an issue. I can tell you as a former player, it's difficult to go from grass to turf. Because as Mercury Morris pointed out to me years ago, on grass you run, but on turf you skate. So there's an adjustment, particularly for the skill players. Second down and seven. Here's Carr, quick drop, throwing and completing to bury it again, far side. He's very close to another first down. I can't, I can't resist the idea that you can see right there, two on two, bury in number two, and of course Starks number two. That's going to be interesting all day long. Earlier in the game, we're talking about slipping. Watch the feet outside. You can see right there, Barry not quite used to it, and stumbles just a little bit. That, of course, that was a play about three plays ago, but still, that is going to be an issue. They have to get used to it, and that's a very good point by Rhino. I didn't, I didn't see the flag. I did not see the flag. Either. Ineligible receiver downfield against the offense. Remains second back. There's the man we've been making reference to, Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator of Wisconsin. We talked last week, he said the big issue here is crucial third down conversions. He said the reason that they lost last week, Oregon converted three straight third and longs. And, and of course, I thought it interesting too when I asked him if he get a chance to see Coach Hill. He talked a little bit about, about a comparison between Joey Harrington and David Carr. We'll give you more of that information a little bit later. Second and 12, they're running it with Paris Gaines, and he'll get a couple of yards back. Jeff Mack made the stop along with Wendell Bryan. This is something that Fresno State very much wants to establish. While Carr is certainly a premier quarterback, you have to have a semblance of a running game. Wisconsin's going to be afforded the opportunity to pin their ears back and come up people in the road. Third down conversions. You see for Fresno State, 35%. That's been a problem for Wisconsin, because it wasn't a problem on their first drive. They didn't come up with a third down. Here's third down for the Bulldog. Carr throwing on the run and what a catch. Bernard Berrien slipped down and on the turf made the grab for 15 in the first down. And how accurate is this? How accurate a throw is this by Carr? He's on the run and Berrien hits the ground. Barry is going to plant right here on the deep comeback route. He slips and falls, and there's the ball right in his chest. That is an amazing level of accuracy and a great job by Carr. Knowing that he's coming back for the ball, there's no way he could have been cogs of the fact that he's going to slip. But still, what a terrific throw. Great concentration on the part of Barry, too. Here's the first down. All of a sudden, it's a good-looking drive for Carr the Bulldog. Now Carr under pressure. He's going to go down. Wendell Bryant drags him down at the 45-yard line. 
And he had all sorts of time. That's got to be considered a coverage sack. Well, maybe so, but again, the issue here, as you pointed out at the top of the show, he's never seen anybody like Wendell Bryant. What a stud. Watch number 77. Here he is pushing up the field. He goes through two people. Look at the running back there. That was absolutely no help at all. When he gets back up, he's going to say, hey, come on, Gaines, give me a little bit more than that. Watch as he beats him. Watch him just steamroll the running back right in the face of Carr. I'm telling you right now, Wendell Bryant, he's a stud ball. Second down and 18. Hand it off the left side. Mark Hay Davis, the receiver coming around. Joey Bose pushed him out after the game. Well, well, L10 well. update. Sports Center in game with Brian Kennedy. Steve, go to Kinnick Stadium, Iowa against Miami of Ohio. And the Hawkeyes for a big week. A lot of scoring against Penn State. Get one more. Kyle McCann against Jeremy Allen. 7 0. Iowa up on top, guys. All right, Brian, thank you. He was posted on everything going on. Sports Center in game throughout this college football afternoon and tonight as well. Third down and six. Harris gains the lone setback, but Carr's going to throw. Throw and complete. Able to hook up with Rodney Wright down to the 20-yard line. Gain of 12. Rodney Wright was the stud last week. Eight catches over 180 yards and two touchdowns against the Beavers. Nice catch as he reached back for that one. It was a little bit behind him. I mentioned Sports Center in game today and tonight. There's great college football action for you tonight, as usual. A couple of top 25 ranked teams, South Carolina and Georgia. And over on ESPN2, Tennessee and Arkansas. The ball's coming in ranked seventh in the nation. Fresno State now three for three on third down. They fake the handoff, and Carr's going to throw, and incomplete. Trying to show a touch there, and could not connect with Gaines. The late flag comes in at about the 18-yard line. Well, he saw that Delonte McGrew, the defensive lineman, was not fooled. He was right with the receiver. I'll be interested to see what Carr... That certainly can't be intentional grounding. That's the second time that's happened. And of course, the timing play for a screen of that nature requires the lineman to hang in there just a little bit. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking here, Steve, this is just my opinion on the 20 yard and refuse that. I want to give Carr two more opportunities. You're, you don't want to give him three here heading into the red zone. Ineligible receiver downfield against the offense. Still first down. Well, that explains why I'm up here and not down. <laughs> People are already downfield before the ball is thrown. You can see it. There's a phalanx of blockers. Good call by the official. But again, I really believe this. I really don't want, I, you don't want to give this quarterback three more, three opportunities. Trust your defense on second and 10. <laughs> Officials are from the Big Ten. Dan Capron is the referee. Pat Bayer is the umpire. Ed Peters, the linesman. First down and 15 now. For Carr again, good protection throwing, and he's throwing into double coverage. Rodney Wright, the intended receiver, but the Badgers were there. Starks and Bose had the coverage perfectly. That's the one bad throw that Carr has had right here. He hangs his receiver out to dry. Wright's right in the middle, and it gives Bose the opportunity to lay him out. That ball is a little bit high, but there's no way he's going to complete it anyway. This is why running, this is what they talk about when they tell receivers to have courage in the middle of the field. He knows right there he can't get it, and so you can see he got his arm down, was able to brace himself, not be exposed as Bose put the lick on. Second down and 15. Take one way, get it the other way. The Paris Gaines up the middle. He's down to the 20-yard line. Ben Herbert made the stop. Sports Center in game update time with Brian Kenny. Steve, Virginia Tech and Western Michigan, 16 plays, 73 yards, fourth and goal. Virginia Tech going for Keith Burnell. Stop, Broncos with the stop. Yet no Lee Suggs, no score right now. Meantime, Texas is on the board, 7-0 over North Carolina. Guys? Steve, that's got to be tough for the Hokies to lose 26 touchdowns. That's how many Lee Suggs had last year, and of course, as well as over 1,000 yards rushing. Third down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Gains the lone setback. Carter is one part. Pump going in. Now, what a throw! Down. What a throw! Able to hook up with Marquette Davis. Touchdown! They go with the slam up, Steve. He takes the three steps inside the corner, bites, and he's got to throw off it up to the top. Boy, that's just a great throw by Carr. The touch on this ball is amazing. Watch as he looks the safety off. Now comes back. There's the little pump fake right there. 
Starks actually isn't in that bad of coverage, but how much better can you throw the ball? You're over the top of the five foot ten pounder. Boy, that's a terrific throw by Carr. Here's Fresno State. How about this formation? Yes, the teams. <laughs> Swinging good. Come on. This is really not a big fan, huh? Well, neither of the, he, he the crowd. You can hear him. Asin Asperhoff is set for the extra point. I'm sorry, who? Asperhoff. Well done. Able to connect. We're going to analyze that throw. What a drive. Tremendous on third down conversions. Much more on that. We're deadlocked. It's as we mentioned, just tremendous accuracy. He has a nice little pump fake here on the slant and up that affords Davis the opportunity to get a little bit of a gap on Starks. Wisely takes the three step drop. Now he looks, watch the left shoulder, uh, like this. That makes Starks move just a little bit to the inside, and the result is he puts the ball right on the money. This ball could not be better thrown over the top, extending just a little bit. Just tremendous accuracy by number eight. Carr goes four of six for 56 yards. That was a 64-yard drive in 12 plays. The most impressive, the third down conversion rate for Fresno State, four for four. And the very thing that we pointed out, why do you want to give this guy another play, right? Why do you want to give another play on third down? Brent Visitator. Gets it away. And it's Nick Davis will let it bounce into the end zone. Amazing. Some teams are playing their third game today. Some teams are playing their first. Sports Center in game with Brian Kenny. Steve, we're getting underway in Ohio State. Jim Tressel era is underway in the horseshoe, the newly expanded horseshoe. They've been over 101,000 people there, and they get to see Jonathan Wells going 15 yards. Buckeyes up on top on Akron. It's 7 0 in the first quarter. Iowa has scored again on Miami of Ohio. It's 14 0 there. Steve Todd. Brian, thank you. We'll get a we'll be part of those 101,000 fans next week when San Diego State comes to Columbus. We look forward to that. Next week, we'll do these tonight. Anthony Davis, the ball carrier. Nothing doing there. He's pushed back inside the 15. Jason Stewart leading the charge. Well, the last drive for Wisconsin, of course, was just down the field as if they didn't exist. Big plays. First of all, you had the good kickoff return, and then Evans with a short out route breaks the tackle, cuts up field, gets him past midfield. And then, of course, Anthony Davis, I pointed out, looks like he's running downhill. Now, you know what? I'll wait a little bit later to make that comparison, but those of you who are a little older remember number 28 by the name of Davis. And of course, Sorgi is the one as the beneficiary of those big plays. Second down and 13 after the loss of three by Davis. Some motion on the left side of the line there. And Sorgi passes in and out of the hands of Nick Davis. Good coverage on the play by Devon Beck. And suddenly the aggressiveness of that Fresno State defense is beginning to show up. You saw the penetration on the first play. Second time they're all over it. And those are the scoring drives that Wisconsin has put together. Remember Wisconsin, we mentioned coming in here against Fresno State. They have won 13 consecutive home games against non-conference opponents. The last time they lost was in 1995 to Colorado. So this is an uphill battle for Fresno State, but they genuinely believe they're up to the task. Third and 13 off the incompletion. You see the play clock underneath the game clock. Ten seconds to get it away, and they do easily. And the throw by Sorge is complete to Evans down the sideline. He scampers out of bounds after the 19-yard gain. He's out of the 36. Tyree Sands had the coverage. This is a great throw because he has to go through a number of bodies. Take a look at what happens. Sorge, they're going to blitz him. Strong safety, strong safety comes on the blitz. He needs to throw this ball between a number of bodies. Take a look at the accuracy of which Sorge delivers the ball. A lot of bodies right there. He puts it right on the hands of Evans. What a great throw. Chad Coons, the fullback, checks in. He's got his younger brother, Russ, is the second string fullback behind him. Short deep straight drop and will throw. And the pass incomplete. Byron's round was not going on. Uh, 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 driving over to the game today, Steve, I was listening to the radio for Wisconsin football, and the, and the moderator, the host, rather, was talking about how there are a lot of people that feel as if maybe that's the guy they should stay with to the end of the year. 
because in his two starts, he has been outstanding, despite the fact they weren't able to pull off the victories. And Bollinger, though, is a little bit more molding. He adds another dimension, whereas Sorge is arguably the better passer. I'm just impressed he had the AM radio on this morning. What happened to the country music? <laughs> to the AM. Second down and 10. Flags fly. We told you at the top of the broadcast, want to introduce you to this Fresno State football team you might not have heard much about, but there you see their linebackers led by Maurice Rodriguez. Last year a key special teams player, now just one of the keys on defense. The hard-hitting secondary, you saw Banks come up. McGill is their leading tackler. Tyree Sams, arguably the best cover corner. More on Fresno State, things you might not be aware of. Founded back in 1911, they come out of the whack. And they are the Bulldogs. They are the feel-good college football story of the season. And that figures to be on the line here this afternoon. Again, flags flying as Anthony Davis, the ball carry, turns the corner. Again, there's a flag down, but Davis is down the sideline. And he's still in bounds. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. We'll see the flag. I think, Steve, I think the flag is offsides. It would appear that the flag is offsides, and I think it's going to count. If it does, it'll be a 68-yard touchdown by Anthony Davis. Help. Oh, there, Fresno State. I, I, thought the guy, I thought they had jumped offsides. You see, Fresno State's pretty excited. Maybe they were able to create some movement. I thought it was offsides when it appeared that somebody jumped right in the middle. That's, that's what it was. It was holding offsides. And offsides. I didn't see the other holding. Well, clearly, Steve, one of the other things, too, is at the end of the run when Nick Davis comes over and makes the block, I thought that was a block in the back. Take a look. Right there, there's, there's the offsides jumping through. That's number 44 who gets in the crease, and he's a little bit offsides. That's Jaron Ger Smith. Now to the outside. Watch to the left. You're going to see Nick Davis come over and make a block. That's in the back. Yeah. And that's where the... That was the flag. It wasn't holding. It was a block in the back. Well, that's a tough one. Wipes out what would have been a 68-yard touchdown run by Anthony Davis. Instead of a lead, it's... Second and 15 from their own 32-yard line. Davis likely out of breath, remains the lone setback, and they'll try him again. And try the left side. Not really easy to turn the corner, and he swung around down at the 30-yard line. Set for an update. Virginia Tech always good on the special teams. Here's Brian Kennedy. Steve, how right you are, and here we go. Virginia Tech going on Western Michigan. Blocked up, punt. Wayne Ward got a piece of it. It's the 84th block kick in the Frank Beamer era. 164 games, 84 block kicks. They punched it in from there, so they've got the lead. Georgia Tech now up 14-0 on Navy. Guys? I'm glad Brian did that. I'm glad he pointed out the number because I remember a couple years ago when I was doing Virginia Tech games, they figured out that they had a block every two games, and so they're still keeping that up. 84 and what was it, 164? That's impressive. They see the third down problem for Wisconsin to pass across the middle. Take it off the turf he got, and he did not. Lee Evans claiming he made the catch. It looked like he took it off the turf, and it'll just go as an incompletion and bring up fourth down. Now, Steve, I, I want to make a point right here. If for whatever reason, watch the ball, see where the hands are. Right there, you can see the ball is on the ground. His hands are on top of the ball. Good job by the umpire to see that. What I was about to say, Steve, as you see it more clearly from that angle, good job, guys, is this. If Fresno State goes on to win this game, that hold or that block in the back there on this play could, could be huge later on. It's Kirk Munden punching it away. And Bernard Berrien has it. Trying to use the sideline as advantage. He does. Nice move by Berrien. And he's out to the 49-yard line. Chris Holznet made the stop. A 44-yard punt, 23-yard return by Berrien. Fresno State to the offense when we come back. One of the issues here is you see the crowd of red, 77,000. Early on, it appeared that Fresno State was bothered by things, but certainly they have 
gain their composure, and Pat Hill was very aware of that coming in. He said that he needed his team to respond well, and he felt that they would for this reason, and that's that he has a number of older players. You see the passing yards have improved as a result of Carr being there, but he has juniors and seniors in his two deep roster scheme. They only have four freshmen. And that says a lot about the veteran leadership that the Bulldogs have on their club. Right. If you had to pick one of these two you thought would be young and inexperienced, it would probably be Fresno State. It's not the case. Bernard Berrien down the sideline. He's having himself a ball game, and he's down to the 36-yard line. More on those special, special teams. Here's Brian Kenny in the center and game. Steve, Texas and North Carolina. Mac Brown playing his old school. And after Ronald Curry was intercepted for a touchdown, Nathan Vasher for the Longhorns, taking this 60 yards. He'd get it to the three, they'd score from there. We've yet to see if Chris Sims can move the Longhorns, but it's 14 nothing, guys. All right, Brian, thank you. North Carolina coming in 0-2 uh, to that game against Texas. Did you hear Lee Corso said about the heart of Texas? Whoa, no, I did not. Yeah, great they hand it off to a single Rodney Wright. He's got the first down and more, but there is a flag down on the play. Coming into this game, it's clear to me that Andy Ludwig must have seen something on the flanks. Maybe Wisconsin doesn't have the speed that they once did. But their offensive coordinator, that's now about the third of those reverses that they've been going with. Is your offensive coordinator. A little bit of motion there that one of the linemen moved, which is unfortunate. But creative play calling on the part of Ludwig coming into this drive. Did a great job in the first drive, and now right off the bat, goes with, his, goes with the reverse. Two of them, in fact. And so he's doing his best to keep them off balance. And I think the reason for this, Steve, is that clearly the one thing Fresno State has not established. Illegal formation against the offense. Only had six men on the line of scrimmage. Repeat first down. One of the things they have not established in the first two games is, is a running game. They've been able to win without a running game, and he knows that if he can't do it between the tackles, he has to be a little bit more creative, and thus far he's done exactly that. Todd, Fresno State has now gone 15 straight games without having a 100-yard rusher. Josh Levi, back in 99 against San Jose State, was the last to do it. Very in motion. On first down and 15 after the penalty marker, it's Paris Gaines for no game. Well, there are bulldogs and there are bad dogs. Here's Dave Ryan. And it's going to be a bad dog, Steve, no question. Pat Hill of Fresno State, a thorough believer in motivation. The most coveted honor there at Fresno State is getting a bad dog t-shirt. Only two players have gotten that so far. Mark K. Davis, the receiver, had a touchdown catch today. And Roddy Wright, another receiver for his great effort against Colorado. It means you totally dominate your position. On the back, talks all about how being hard-nosed, aggressive, fundamental is what the Bulldogs want to be. This is something every player wants to get. Here's Carr firing and completing to Bernard Berry and on the second and 15. Scott Starks was with him step for step. It's a 12-yard game. I don't know, for, for Dave, he's got the Speedo last week and the Bad Dog t-shirt this week. Who knows what'll happen next week in Columbus. Well, I know that he didn't want to model the Speedo, but he can throw on that Bad Dog. As Berry, and we see, has had his fourth catch in the first quarter. He's become the go-to guy. It's interesting because Wright was the guy last week. Four catches for 36 yards. Doing a great job against the secondary of the Bad Third down and three. Again, they were four for four on third down conversions on their opening drive. The touchdown run. Here's Carr. He's got the running room, and he will run out of bounds after picking up the first down. This is a great call. This is a great call. Go, going against the weak side, there's no way that you've anticipated the quarterback is going to run. 6'3", 225, he's not altogether nimble, but he goes against the short stipe, and there's nobody up in support. Great job by Carr to get the first. Carr showed some speed there. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, another third down conversion. Kevin Cosby is going to be frustrated. First and 10 now. Gaines remains a lone setback. Carr wants nothing to do with him. Carr is throwing. Nearly intercepted. Should have been picked off across the middle. Jeff Mapp, but there is a flag down. They have the flag down, Steve, but the official's going to come and say that the ball was tipped, and so I'm pretty sure that they're going to pick the flag up. And Carr was dropped big time in the backfield after he released. The pass was tipped. There is no flag. Good cohesion on the part of the officials to see that. The umpire sprinted back to the back judge to let him know that the ball had been tipped. Very fortunate Carr is that he didn't get that interception. 
in Penn. As you see some scores from around the nation. Syracuse trying to avoid going 0-3 on the season. Here we're all deadlocked, seven all. Fresno State in his time, second down and 10. And it's Harris Dean for the short game. We saw a car running out of bounds. He's known for his strength, not necessarily his speed, but as for the rest of the team, they can run. Team speed and our confidence. Our confidence level is really high. Coach Hill likes to say speed is, at, is an attitude, and uh, I like to think we have a speed attitude, and we go out there and we try and show that to everybody. Again, Carr not known for being that quick, but he is strong. That bench press is 390 pounds, and he can squat 500. 390? Uh, Come on. For a quarterback. Here's Carr throwing. Sets up the screen, able to complete the pass to Rodney Wright for a short gain. And bring up a third down. Actually, I beg your pardon, brings up a fourth down. The third down conversions, which they were so successful on in the first drive. Not able to hit it there. But they'll attempt the field goal. Asin Asparuov is on to attempt a 35-yard field goal. He's four or five this season. He missed a 42-yarder earlier. He will miss this one as well. Asparuov cannot connect. With 4.59 left in the first quarter, we remain tied at seven. The third round of the PGA Bell Canadian Open is coming up at 3 Eastern, 3.30 Eastern today on ESPN. Dickie Pride is your leader, as you see. Where's Tiger? Wood shot a 73 yesterday, leaving him seven back coming into third round action today. What a, what a sports weekend, right? The NFL opening up, another great slate of college football. Tigers up in Canada, the U.S. Open, the New York, the Union Sisters, baseball pin races. Anthony Davis trying the left side. Picks up with eight, eight yards. Maurice Rodriguez and Mark Daly need to stop. Let's check in with Brian Kenny. Steve, let's get you back to Texas and North Carolina. Another subplot in this game. Ronald Curry fighting for his job, but the quarterback here leading a nine-play, 78-yard drive, running in nicely. The two-sports star gets him on the board. It's now 14-7. A couple of basketball players on that North Carolina. Looks right, Julius Peppers. I was about to say, he was the All-State quarterback in Virginia. Second team's a fellow named... Uh, <laughs> Hand off again. Davis trying to break it, and does, 40, 45, and he's fought from behind. He's finally brought down at the 50-yard line by Nick Burley. And if Burley doesn't catch him, he's off to the races. One of the things, the advantages that you have when you are shorter and quicker, watch the hesitation in the hole. Right here, he's able to shuffle and find his way through a real slither of a hole. Not very big. Burley hustles downfield. Otherwise, he goes the distance. Watch how little this hole is. See how tiny that is? A bigger back, a 6'2", 6'3", guy cannot get through that hole. Davis does a great job of picking his spots, getting the first down near midfield. He had a 69-yard touchdown run last week against Oregon. He really had a 68-yard run today. It was wiped out by a penalty. He's got 71 yards on the afternoon. And it's Davis again. A loss on that play. Vernon Fox, the hard-hitting, strong safety, came up to greet him. Grant Harrington in on the nose was able to push the pile back as you see his average. You pointed that out earlier after the 68-yard run. He was winning. You can see there he's a little bit gassed early on but of course i find it interesting to take a look at him because in visiting with both brian white and barry alvarez they said hey we'll give our tail back the ball and told the stories of how in one game one they had 51 carries so he's going well you gotta get some oxygen there give the ball on second down here's sorgi to throw and he's got a man the finger slipped down from Sorgi again flags down the play. Steve, I'm not sure that when he didn't go out and up, he might have gone out of bounds. I'm not sure. Or it might have been a chuck after five. Pass interference by the defense. The punishment is declined. 
Touchdown. Well, it shows how good Evans is that he was able to escape that and get up the field. Watch number three. Here's Evans. He has a little bit of an out, up and up, up he goes. And Edwards knows that he's beaten. He tries to grab it. Really, that's a great job by Evans of staying in bounds and avoiding the tackler and going the distance. I tell you what, this number three is exciting. Evans is only the second wide receiver under Barry Alvarez that consecutive 100 yard receiving game. His old high school buddy, Chris Cooper, throws the other. Mike Allen, on to attempt the extra point. And he's able to connect. Lee Evans, a 53-yard touchdown reception to put Wisconsin up. Well, of course, there's a price to be paid for this, and the all-whack defender, number 98, Alan Harper, makes Sorgi pay. Just wax him to the turf, but give Sorgi credit. He hung in there, put the ball on number three's hands, and that's a touchdown. Sometimes it's not so glamorous playing quarterback. You do get hit. Evans now, three catches for 97 yards. I mentioned having the two consecutive 100-yard receiving games. In Wisconsin history, only two other players have had three consecutive 100-yard receiving games. That's Pat Richter, their current director of athletics. And of course, the great Al Toon. And of course, I find it interesting that we talk about the great players. Now the defense is struggling a little bit. You get a chance to see get a chance to see Coach Brown talking with his charges, saying, don't, don't get down. It's one big play. They can come back. 3-0-1 left in a rather entertaining first quarter from Camp Randall here in Madison. Adam Espinosa. They look to kick it away. Interesting momentum because it seemed like five minutes ago it was on the visitor side you couldn't hear a thing. And the missed field goal and all of a sudden everything goes to the Badgers way. And the sun trying to peek out all morning. And Still trying here. Rain, potential for rain in the forecast as it has been the last few days here in Madison, Wisconsin. They say Madison on a college football Saturday when Camp Randall is full. If Camp Randall Stadium was a city, it would be the sixth largest city <laughs> in the state of Wisconsin. It gives you a feel. Big time atmosphere here in Madison. Bernard Berry and Bryce McGill are deep. Ready the field. Espinosa's kick. Freshman. Puts it in the air. It'll be Berrien, number five. Cuts up the middle. And he is taken down from behind by Bryce McGill. Rather, I beg your pardon. Robert Brooks on a special team stop for Wisconsin. Dan Brown, defensive coordinator for Fresno State, has an interesting biography of his own. You can see his coaching experience. I think that these are, you know, though, people don't understand how nomadic assistant coaches have to be, but the thing that catches my attention is down here on the bottom. <laughs> Holy cow, one of 14 kids, and he has six children of his own. I told him the old joke about you, you need to get the chance to sleep alone until you're married. <laughs> and he chuckled and said, yeah, that's a good one. And just don't, put up with it. No grandchildren at this point. You got to figure he's got plenty of those on the way, right? Here's Carr keeping it himself. Out to the 37 yard line. And again, there is a flag down. He was forced out of the pocket by Wendell Bryant and Nick Bryce. He showed a little more speed on that run. And they'll refuse that play and take the first. Let's check in with Brian Kenny. Brian. Steve, Georgia Tech and Navy, and again, Yellow Jackets are warming up for Florida State. And here we go, Corey Collins with a big hit, dislodges the football. Ricardo Wimbush will pick this up and bring it back in 28-0 already, and it's early in the second quarter. And UCLA off a win at Alabama at Kansas. Right now, Jayhawks have a lead, but it's early, guys. Kansas, a very difficult home schedule this season. The Bruins is part of that. On first down and 10, after the penalty, here's Carr escaping the pressure. And he will just throw that one away. David Carr, rather mature college quarterback. For more on that, here's Dave Ryan. Yes, Steve, Dave Carr's a family man. You'll notice he wears tape on his left ring finger, where his wedding ring normally is, to keep his wife Melody in mind. So she has a presence with him on the field. He won't wear the real wedding ring because it could get scratched and dented, as you know. David and Melody, the proud parents of son Austin, 16 months old, and the whole family, grandparents, about 20 people watching the game back home in Bakerfield today. 
Try to hook up with the family, maybe a little bit later on. See how they're enjoying the broadcast in California. Here's Carr, throwing off his back foot and completing to Bernard Berrien. And he should have enough for the first down. Scott Starks was there on the cover. You know, we talked about Anthony Davis being in shape. Berrien's got to be in shape. Now his fifth catch here in the first quarter, as well as two kickoff returns. He's been a very busy day. Final seven games last season for Berrien. He averaged 17.2 yards per catch. Had touchdown catch of 47, 51, 55, and 71 yards. He's a big yak guy, yards after the catch. And he's a bigger receiver at six foot two, 190 pounds. That's what receivers like. It's a bigger target, and that makes it that much more difficult for cornerbacks who notoriously are smurfs. Three receivers out to the right. Uh, David Carr. And we'll get our first charge timeout of the game. And Fresno State will use a timeout with 234 left in the first quarter from Camp Randall. And the Badgers are on top by a touch. For you, the college football bottom line is underway starting right now. All the major games all day long during college football programming. That's pretty much all day. Back to Stephen Todd. All right, Brian, thank you. We'll focus on that as we look at Barry Alvarez. 54 years old in his 12th year, the winningest coach in school history at Wisconsin. See, with two and a half minutes left in the first quarter, there's already been over 300 yards of offense. Harris Gaines carries the football for the short game. Alvarez, back on February 2nd, made comments that he was here to stay and would finish his career at Wisconsin, not if until he was tempted, well, very tempted, by an offer from Miami. It was a very uh, appealing job to me for a number of reasons. Uh, it's the most serious that I ever really looked into any other job, and most serious I was of, of leaving here. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm loyal to a fault sometimes, and uh, the, the administration and the, and the university have been very good to me here, and uh, I just feel a, an obligation to the kids that we recruited. Here's Paris Gaines running through traffic. As we're listening to the Barry Alvarez, I was just thinking Gaines so far had six carries for 17 yards and yet to break one. That by far his biggest gain of the day is 16 yards. Coming back to Barry Alvarez for a minute, I genuinely believe that he wants to be, and justifiably so, in the same kind of milieu as Paterno and Bowd, being at one school for a very long time, establishing credibility. Certainly Miami would have been enticing because of their history, you see right there. Only Woody Hayes has won the Rose Bowl three times. Very elite company already is very obvious. Hand off, Josh Levi on the ball carry. His first carry of the day as we come up on the final 90 seconds of quarter number one. Alvarez always had a goal of being a collegiate head coach. He, he set his goal, he wanted to be a head coach by the age of 42. Some things just seem to work out for some people. Sure enough, three days after his 42nd birthday, he got the game. And I think there's something to be said for the continuity of it. You know, there's, there's, there's a feel good, not only in the community, but in the community of college football as well. You can see the only coach with two BCS wins. To Levi on the ground, down to the pounding it down to the 26 yard line. You saw the BCS wins. Of course, got to go back to the mid 40s. The last time a, a Big Ten team wasn't guaranteed to be Ten champion, guaranteed of going to the Rose Bowl. This year it's going to be different. And let's not forget that Barry Alvarez, prior to his arrival in Wisconsin, not exactly a story history for that football team. He's the one that really has established the credibility in the program for the Badgers. Third down and four. Final 20 seconds to play. They only have five seconds to snap the football. They do. Here's Carr rolling to his right. Got pressure from Bryant. Throws. And incomplete. The wide receiver Berrien had a step. But Carr couldn't connect with him. And that'll bring up a fourth down. For whatever reason, which I don't understand, Bryant was completely unblocked. He makes his way between the guard and tackle, just is completely untouched. And that makes no sense. That's unconscionable. Watch number 77 take off, just get to the outside, completely unblocked. Carr does a great job of getting away from him and just throwing the ball away, keeping his team in field goal range. Bryant, a defensive tackle, who the coach is saying, you can see, moves like a linebacker. <laughs> Asperuhoff has already missed the 35. This will be from 42. 
This one looks like a dandy. And he's got it. Asen Asparuha connects. He had never kicked the field goal in his life until the 2000 opener a season ago. Well, that's well and good, but say his name five times real fast, would you please? <laughs> I think I've said it five times already. And slowly, though. And it's a 14-10 game in favor of Wisconsin. You get the sets. This is a big test for Fresno State. They're not going away. I almost thought Wisconsin, we talked to the people around the Badger program this week, and they felt a little snubbed. Hey, everybody's talking about Fresno State, and we're going to show them Wisconsin a Big Ten football. And they did on the opening drive. Well, it's a backhanded compliment to Barry Alvarez and his team because they've established themselves as a national power. The fact that we just take for granted that they're a good team, and I think that, that, that they should look at it that way. Clearly, Fresno State is a... Uh, I keep using that phrase, but a feel-good story. Everybody's excited about seeing a new face on the national horizon. And justifiably so. Last time Fresno State started 3-0 was back in 95. They wound up losing seven of their next nine to finish 5-7. and seven. <laughs> Nick Davis and Michael Broussard are back deep. Brett Visitainer will kick it away. And those, those first three opponents that year, Todd, Northeast Louisiana, Cal, and Pacific, not exactly the quality of the opponents they'll face in the first three games, Colorado, Oregon State, and Wisconsin here. Yep. The scheduling has changed under Pat Hill and Fresno State. And I tell you what, this may sound like a moot point here, not a big deal. This is an excellent job by Vicentino because I've seen it happen before. Just as the ball is slipping off, a young kicker will feel like he has to kick it and not go through. The result is terrible field position. Watch the ball and watch Vicentino. He sees it fade just as he's about to kick it, and then he holds up. Great job. Great job. They'll bring him back and do it all over again. It's not like it's not it's not a balk if you want to make the baseball analogy. He's uh he's a kickoff specialist. He had five touchbacks coming into this game. In the first two, that's already one more than he had all of last season. Because of the tee that is not as high as it used to be, you have to get the ball at a certain angle for a kick. And sometimes that makes it better, but now they're going to have to hold it. And a line drive kick. Broussard will field this one. He's out ahead of the 30. And they'll get a couple more yards down to the 33 yard uh, D. Meza on a special team stop for Fresno State. That'll do it. Barry Alvarez and Pat Hill saw their offenses combine for 328 yards in a dandy of a first quarter. Come on back for the second. Dave Ryan, Steve Levy, along with our fine ESPN college football crew. Coming in from Madison, one of the great atmospheres in all of college football. Great to be here on a college football Saturday. Hand off. Jerome Pettis, the ball carrier, his first carrier of the day. And what a carry it is. He's out past the 50-yard line before Bryce McGill finally forced him out. ESPN's exclusive game track, looking at a wild first quarter. Well, Anthony Davis, number 28, had a terrific first quarter with 69 yards rushing. And, of course, David Carr puts the ball right on the money, as good as advertised. And, of course, the man who's arguably having the biggest quarter so far is Lee Evans. 53-yard TD reception. Steve, he has 97 yards receiving already. Lee Evans, number three. I wonder if he can run the 400 meters in 43-86 like his namesake. Back in the 68 Olympics in Mexico City. I'm going to run it fast, but probably not that fast. Here's your own Pettis carrying the football, and he is pounded down, and I mean pounded, at the 46-yard line. Harper, Allen Harper. Harper's the guy, man. Two-time all-whack guy. Let's get an update on that Bruin game off their big win a week ago. Here's Brian Kenny. Yes, yeah, Steve, back-to-back -back road trips for UCLA, and they were down early, but Corey Paul is going to plunge through here, and UCLA taking a 7-3 lead on Kansas. Meantime, Vanderbilt has lost to Alabama 16 straight times, but they do have an early lead. It's 3-zip, guys. Okay, hey, Brian, thank you. Thank you loss of three on the play on the big hit by Harper. For the first time of the day, Steve, Wisconsin goes to the spread. Mark Dinelli, the tight end in motion. Here's Jim Sorgi throwing and dropped by Nick Davis. Davis, of course, had a critical drop one week ago for Wisconsin. It was a fourth and ten play at the Oregon 28-yard line with a minute four left. Certainly would have kept the drive alive. Probably could have gotten to the, at minimum, a key field goal to at least tie the game. And uh, Davis 
a troublesome week, but apparently was handling it just fine, as well as you can. In four years at Wisconsin, he's done a lot of good things. He has five touchdown returns off of kicks, and he is a very good wide receiver, but it would have done an awful lot for his confidence to catch the first ball thrown his way. Instead, he drops it, crowd gets on him, now he's recovering and out of the way. Again, he did have an 18-yard touchdown catch a week ago, but the key fourth and ten play could not hang on. He couldn't hang on to that last one. Georgie floats one across the middle. He's able to complete the Darren Charles. The true freshman, Charles makes the reception. Tyree Sands on a stop after the gain of 17. Here's Dave Bryan. All right, more shirts on the sideline for Fresno State. We talked about Pat Hill in the bag dog shirt. This is the black jersey. Goes out to the top offensive players who really dominate their respective positions in games. So far, in the first two games of the year at Colorado, eight players got to wear the practice black jersey the following week. Oregon State, six, including Alan Harper, who goes out to the guy who really is exceptional on the field offensively. Got to wear it for that following week in practice, guys. Despite the heat in California, more than 100 degrees last week during the workouts. Yeah, they were talking about... Uh... Harper and the team in 100 degree heat, but it's still a privilege for that team to wear the black jersey. Anthony Davis is the ball carrier. Game of two or three. Again, Harper makes the stop along with Nick Burley. Take a look at what Anthony Davis can do. And I, I, I have this, I want you to take a look at something that's unique to really good running backs. His ability to make people miss in the hole. Watch how quick he is right here. He's going to get tackled from behind. But watch, has him dead to rights. Now watch the movement right here. Boink! Goes right past him. That's going to be frustrating for number 31. That was Mark Daly who comes up to get him. But Davis shows the sweet feet. Second down and eight. Here's Sorgi off the play action with plenty of pressure. He's able to complete the pass to the tight end. Mark Anelli able to hang on. Let's get an update now. Here's Brian Kenny. Steve, one of the stories we're following on our game day track, Mac Brown versus his old school, North Carolina and Texas, and back come the Tar Heels. Trey Williams goes in for the touchdown. It's all tied up now, 14-14. Right now, Clemson trails Wolford 7-0 there in the first quarter. Steve, Todd? I think that score will likely change. I'm guessing that you're right. That will not be the uh, final Woody, score. Woody Dancer is going to put up some numbers today. Third down and six. Here's Sorgi. Able to connect with Lee Evans. Had some difficulty, it looked like, off that shotgun snap, but still cool and calm enough to complete the pass. Something that I don't understand now is Lee Evans goes over 100 yards. In talking with defensive coordinator Dan Brown, I said, you know that this is their stud as you see the first quarter, not exactly a defensive struggle. 14 to 10 on all the yards that they have put up. I had mentioned, why not double team Evans? I mean, Evans is their guy. Make somebody else beat you. And he said that in theory that makes sense, but unfortunately, he said, that discombobulates the defense in its entirety. Still, as a, as a deep coordinator, I'm just saying, cover that guy, make somebody else do it. Chad Coons, the fullback is sent out in motion. They hand it off to Davis. Across the 20. And he'll be slowed down and finally dropped. At the 17-yard line, Tyree Sands leading the way. Clearly, I'm impressed with Davis, as you can tell. I keep mentioning all the little subtleties that he has. Take a look. Take a look here as you see a very serious young man. He wore his number 28, and of course, those of you who are a little bit older remember an Anthony Davis and AD for USC who used to dance on his knees. Take a look at the quickness as he gets in the hole and the power at the end. He gets stopped. Watch, he's going to get tackled. Now watch him push forward. Use that leg strength to get forward for the extra yards. Davis up to this point now. Eight carries for 80 yards. Even I can figure out that out. <laughs> and they'll try Davis again. Taking a pounding now between the tackles. Jason Stewart, the first to put a helmet on him. One of the things, of course, that they really felt like they lost with Michael Bennett at the position was that speed. But in fact, Davis is a 10 400 meter guy. So even though, of course, Bennett was the Big Ten winner in the 100 meters, they don't lose that much in terms of that. And of course, he's only a redshirt freshman. He's got a lot of time to grow as a runner. He'll get a breather now. Comes out of the great running back state of New Jersey. Yeah, they had a fellow here to get to the yard. Third down and three. They got six seconds to snap the football. You see it below the game clock, which has 10.20 left in the half. And Sorgi able to connect to Jerome Pettis, the running back out of the backfield making the catch. And, of course, the sure tackle is what Fresno State has been famous for in the first two games, their ability to drop people in the tracks, and that's what they do. They'll be forced to go with a field goal. True freshman kicker. 
Mike Allen will come on to kick it away. The 37 yard field goal attempt. Trying to put the Badgers up by seven again. Snap of the place is just fine. And so too is the field goal. Allen connects from 37 yards away. And Barry Alvarez and the Badgers once again up by seven. They lead Fresno State 17 to 10. Welcome back. Beautiful Madison, Wisconsin. Badgers have a 17 to 10 lead over Fresno State. You see the number 23 next to Wisconsin. Fresno State is not currently ranked in the ESPN USA Today poll. They are ranked number 19 in the AP poll. And the reason is they had their big victory on Sunday night. The big win over Oregon State on their home field. Maybe the biggest home victory in Fresno State history. But the ESPN USA Today poll came out earlier on Sunday. That was not factored in. Espinosa kicks it away. Bernard Berrien will take an eight. And they'll start first and ten from their own 20, but not before we check in with Brian Kenny. Steve, we'll get you back to Virginia Tech and Western Michigan. Grant Knoll, new quarterback course. Michael Vick getting ready for the NFL season. Knoll is in for the keeper. 17-0. Virginia Tech now leads Western Michigan. Knoll is 5 for 10 in the air as well. Guys? Brian, thank you. Do you know what color that is? Do you know what color Virginia Tech is? The official wording? Yeah. No, I do not recall. Okay. Oh, that's right. That? Yeah, I remember going over the media guy and finding that skill in the center. I remember. There's a throw by Carr, and he overshot his target, looking for Mark K. Davis. And you can see on that throw, wasn't sidearm, wasn't over the top, something in between. Take a look at the flick. A lot of coaches have said that he reminds him of Jeff George. Take a look at how he throws the ball, and the ball leaves his hands so quickly. Just right there, flick. This is one of the things that scouts are impressed with because of his quick release. And of course, we pointed out, at least I've pointed out ad nauseum up to this point, his accuracy. Although right now his numbers are just a little bit above 50%. Give some credit to the secondary of the Badgers. Six touchdown passes on the season. He has yet to be picked off. Here's Carr again. You got a good look at that three-quarter delivery there to Bernard Berrien. The completed pass. I think his knee was down when he made the reception. We have noticed, I'm glad that Dave Ryan pointed that out early on, there have been a number of slips today, Steve, and not just by Fresno State. Wisconsin's been slipping a little bit, too. So even though it has been raining today, the deluges of the past two days are really becoming a factor here on this field. There's Barry again. You can see the knee touches down. Good job by the official. And great flexibility by Barry. I think I'd be able to surgeon's knife now if that in my head. Here's third down and four, and they're getting loud at Camp Randall. Fresno State five and seven on third down conversion so far. Here's Carr looking for it. Got better oh, throw and got catch. it. Wow. First down and more. Bernard Berrien on the receiving end of a David Carr touch pass. Mike Eccles was there on the go. Steve, what you do is you put all your receivers up top and you isolate on one man, and that's what happened. Eccles is their great cover guy, but here's what you want. You put all this mess, get everybody up to the side of the field, then it becomes pitch and catch. And once again, the accuracy of Carr. The coverage is terrific by Eccles, but Berrien able to make the catch and another third down conversion for Fresno State. Take a look at the flick again. Uh, it's fun to watch. That's a 30-yard game. Very six pass of the afternoon, and that one was fired in there for Rodney Wright. Maybe too much mustard. Wright could not hang on. Well, up to this point, although some of his throws have been inaccurate, we pointed out that early on defensive coordinator Kevin Cosgrove of Wisconsin mentioned that Carr does not make mistakes. The one mistake that I can remember is throwing into coverage when he almost got his guy killed in the middle of the field. But up to this point, he's been able to find the man predominantly who is in man-for-man -man coverage. Kevin Cosgrove in his eighth year as defensive coordinator is the only remaining member of Barry Alvarez's first staff here. Here's Mark K. Davis, the wide receiver, carrying the football. And he's out close to another first down. He's brought down by Joey Bose. And a great block ahead of him by his tight end. I mentioned, I mentioned at the top of the show that Jeremy Johnson, number 85, is only 6 foot 4, but only 205 pounds. But he's the guy that does a great job leading out front. Watch number 85, the tight end. He's flexed out. There he is right there. Now watch his ability to keep him out of the play. Enabling Davis to get the extra yardage. Johnson had a career game. He's only a sophomore, but had a career game against Oregon State. Seven catches, 73 yards, and one score. 
His third and short now. And they will put it on the ground of Paris Gaines. Most of his games have been in. for short yardage, and he should have enough for the first down there. Herbert and Bryant combining to make the stop for the Badgers. Bulldogs have run Bryant four reverses already today. We mentioned the start of the NFL season tomorrow afternoon, but we get started on ESPN Sunday Night Football. The Dolphins and Eddie George and the Tennessee Titans. They've got Samari Roll in the fold after signing his new contract extension. And some of the numbers for Eddie George he is a load. Maybe the finest running back in the NFL. Over Marshall Clark. Here's Carr throwing flags down and the pass batted down by Jeff Mack. The second time tonight to this afternoon, Mack has batted a ball away. While we wait to see what the flag is, you mentioned Eddie George. He is the lone exception to the rule that I was talking about, at least up to this point, as we see that the Badgers were offside. And that is, is that I'm a big fan of the runners who are a little bit shorter of the lower center of gravity. Eddie George is 6'3", 235. But he is an absolute Adonis. I'm telling you what, that is one of the most amazing bodies I've ever seen. During his Heisman Trophy year, Steve, I broadcast a game at Ohio State and had a chance to meet Offside him. Offside by the defense. Repeat first down. And I got a big kick out of the fact that he came over to me and he says, man, you're big. I said, I'm big? Look at you. Speaking of Heisman Trophy winners. You see Ron Dane over 2,000 yards a couple of years ago. Very deserving. All-time leading rusher in NCAA Division I history. Dane came in as a freshman here at 270 pounds on that 5'10 frame. 270, 5'10. That's a load. Yeah. <laughs> Swim down just a bit, but not too much. Dane trying to turn the corner. Nick Bryson brought him down. Haven't spoken with Dave Ryan in quite some time, Dave. All right, Steve. Even though the sun is peeking out behind the clouds here, the rain was a factor from last night. We had a couple hours of rain, as we mentioned, and the, the uh, turf here is still very, very slick. Officials here at Wisconsin tell me, even though the sun is coming out and we're not getting rain at the moment, although we could throughout the day, the turf will stay wet most of the day unless the wind really kicks up today, and we're not having that at all in the field right now. Good call. Seven and a half to play in the first half. Second down and five from the 27. Carr rolling out to his right. Pump one, 10 throw, and intercepted! Picked up by Scott Starks. Hit him right between the numbers. Starks, the true freshman, on the interception. Well, this is what, this is what Kevin Cosgrove talked about, the next star defensively for Wisconsin. And that's Starks. This is the play that they had run earlier. Remember, this is the play in which Barrian had slipped, and he puts the ball on the numbers. Watch right here at the point of attack. When he rushes out here, he throws behind a little bit, and Barrian does not make the adjustment. You're going to see number two running, steps in front. That's a great job, great anticipation on the point uh, by Scott Starks. And one of the things we talked about because of the comparison is you see the very first turnover of the season for the Bulldogs, which is pretty amazing. We had talked about the comparisons between him and Jamar Fletcher, and we talked about the instincts of Fletcher. Certainly Starks had good instincts there to step in front. Here's Broderick Williams, the ball carrier. We were not sure we were going to see Broderick Williams, the last ball carrier. That was his first carry of the afternoon. A young man, Steve Starks, 155 pounds. So for these young, those, those youngsters out there who think you're not big enough, you are. Here's the reason we didn't think we'd see Broderick Williams. He underwent surgery on April 20th. This is what the media guide said. Should recover fully after a six to eight month rehabilitation. I don't think so. Wow, that's impressive. Broderick Williams suffered a torn ACL in April. Tore his other ACL back in high school. So he's been through it before. George did all sorts of time throwing, and he was nearly picked off. Nick Davis was the intended target. Anthony Limbrick was back there for Fresno State. With a play-action fake, Sorge, had plenty of time to look, but then the indecisiveness almost cost him. You can see right at the end, he hesitates, double clutches, throws the ball anyway. And as you pointed out, Steve, he's lucky to get this one back. This should have been an interception. Plenty of time. Now watch him step up in the pocket, step up, double cut. Oh, now he just throws it. Now you're not going to be able to get the ball 40 yards downfield when you flick it like that with just the elbow. Fortunate for Sorge to get that one back. Third down and nine. Here's Sorge. Good job by Williams to pick up the blitz and completes. Able to hit Mark Anelli, the tight end for the first down. And a 
know you love that, Todd. And he looks over to Brian White and says, nice call. That was a good decision. In the two starts for Sorge, you can see that he matched up against some pretty good quarterbacks. Drew Brees last year, of course, he was a Heisman guy. And everybody knows about Joey Harrington at Oregon. Unfortunately for the Badgers, they did lose both those games. But clearly with Sorge, you've got kind of that Jim Kelly, Frank Reich thing working in terms of a second guy who is certainly a quality guy under center. He sampled a number of coaches who actually faded them to compare Sorgia Harrington. And sheepishly, a lot of them said, well, that's Sorgia. Here's Sorgia now throwing. And incomplete, but there's a flag on the play. They're going to call Tyree Sands for holding. I don't know if it's going to be holding or interference. If it's interference, obviously, it's going to be more yardage. That is going to be 15 yards in. As you look at the replay, let's check in with Brian Kenny. Brian? Steve, let's get you up to date just on all the top 25 teams playing right now. Texas with their offense sputtering right now. We'll talk about that at the half. Chris Sims struggling. In the interest of national security, we won't show you what Georgia Tech is doing to Navy at this point. And Clemson trails right now in the first quarter. Send it back to you, Steve. Todd? Right, Brian, thank you. 6.08 left here in the second. National security aside, I'm curious if that's a good preparation for Florida State to play a team like Navy the week before. It gives you confidence, but maybe it does false sense of confidence. Exactly. First down and 10. Here's Shorty on the ground. Roderick Williams. And he is brought down at the 34-yard line, tackled by Maurice Rodriguez. Because Wisconsin has established the run early, that's made things that much more effective for Sorgi. That's a given. But one of the things it's also done is it's taking time off the clock. This is Wisconsin football. You take time off the clock and throw sporadically. As you see, Alvarez coming over to Williams, asking how it feel. Feel good? You all right? That's a tradition there at Wisconsin. That's how they do it. I'll rush the opponent, get the T.O.P., and of course, win the battle of field position because in the past they've had outstanding. So he'll give it to Davis again. Why not? This time, not much of a game. Mark Daly brought it down, tackled by Daly. And that's what they've been known for for the first two games, their ability to drop people. And one of the Fresno State really needs a stop here because if they can get it on an incomplete pass, that would force about a 50-yard field goal. Alan Harper of Fresno State said he believes their defensive front is the best in the nation. Well, that's an unbiased opinion, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Harper's a guy who says, if you can dream it, you can make it happen. And he actually got some of the guys in the defense together in the Oregon State game last week and said, hey, dream this, dream making these stops. And sure enough, they get out a dream football game. Third down and six now. Sorgi off the low snap out of the shotgun. And the pass was too high. It's intended for David Broad, the junior from the nearby local boy from Madison. Now, Barry Alvarez is vacillating a little bit. He's thinking to himself, maybe we're just as well to go for it here on the 33-yard line. Sorgi's been hot, been making some throws, and for the youngster, 50 yards might be a little bit out of his range. In high school, Allen did hit a 57-yarder, but don't forget, in high school, you get to do it off the tee. And he did it more amazing than that, Todd. He did it with a broken kicking ankle. How's that for a story? He's got a seven-point game in Madison. Stadium in Madison, approaching halftime, and the Badgers have a 17-10 lead. And we come back with fourth down and six. And a field goal attempt from Mike Allen, already good from 37. This will be a 50-yard attempt. Again, as we told you, going to break, hit a 57-yarder in high school on a broken ankle. Let's see here, from 50, looks plenty good, and it is! Mike Allen connects from 50 yards. You see the reaction from Pat Hill. And with the field goal, Wisconsin opens up a 10-point lead over Fresno State. 
Six left first half here from Madison. Freshman Mike Allen, a 50-yard field goal, gives the Badgers a 10-point lead. And isn't Barry Alvarez glad he's got this youngster? He came to campus July 24th for freshman orientation with his parents. That's when he decided to stop by the football office to see if they had a spot for him on the football team to walk on. Coach Barry Alvarez gave him the chance and took advantage. He's the first string kicker now. And guys, try to find him anywhere in the preseason football media guide here at Wisconsin. You can't. I think he'll be in there next year. Alvarez was really concerned about the kicking game because he's going with the walk-on Allen. He's replacing Vitaly Pesetsky, who was an outstanding kicker. Kirk Munden, the punter, who's replacing Kevin Stempke, an excellent punter as well. So it was an area of concern. But I'd say field goal kicking, they're all set right now after Allen connects from 50 yards away. Adam Espinosa on the kickoff to Bernard Berrien. Berrien is brought down at the 25-yard line. There's not a better defensive end tandem in the league. Opposing quarterbacks this season can expect pressure. Oh, no, but I'm going to get him. Should be a great defensive battle there. I had, had a chance to bump into Kevin Carter. I did. We were at a function in Los Angeles for Cedar sinai Hospital. Ran into him, and I said, what are they going to call you guys? Of course, they're both from Florida. He says, they're calling us Hater Range. <laughs> Hey Davis. Davis the ball the far here. side gets five to the back, bring up a second down and five. When we come back, will this be an upsetting Saturday? Is Brian Kenny. Yeah, Steve, some surprises so far here in some the first half of football. Central Florida and Syracuse. And you see that as time expires, Brian Miller airing it out. Doug Gabriel bringing it down to him for the touchdown. Central Florida has a lead at the half. That's the way to go to the locker room. And Wofford does lead Clemson still 14 to 7. I knew the score would change. It was 7 nothing before, see? Bernard Berrien on the receiving end. Starks running down quickly. Under four to play here in the first half. Wisconsin out in front, 20 to 10. David Carr this summer was waiting for a video game to come out. The NCAA Football 2002, he couldn't wait to get it. So he was checking it at the store, and sure enough, he shows up there, and he stands behind a kid who was playing Fresno State on the video game, and he said he had Carr throwing for 400 yards and all his receivers making catches, and Carr said, what a thrill it is to see yourself in a video game. Yeah, you know, when Tecmo Bowl came out, I'd have kicked out of that. <laughs> <laughs> you look at Carr's numbers so far in the afternoon. Bulldogs trailing by 10. Carter trying to keep that one. Wasn't his first choice. He brought down shy of the 40 by Ben Herbert. Well, that's, that's the fifth sack of the season now that Fresno State has, has given up. And I dare say this could be a coverage sack. You've seen McGrew battling. It was a great job of stepping up. Carr, for whatever reason, didn't want to hang in the pocket. Good coverage for the Badgers downfield. Brings up a second down and 11. A name we haven't called much, Steve, is Rodney Wright. He was huge on Sunday night, but hasn't made much of a contribution this far. There he is, right on the receiving end. Just as you mentioned his name. Joey Bose spun him out of bounds. Spins him out of bounds and says something in his ear, like, don't try that again. Bose's a tough kid. One of the things that one of the things that Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator, mentioned about Rodney Wright is that he plays much larger than his 5'9", 175 pounds. He is willing to go in the middle of the field, and he is a good blocker and a tough guy. Wright had a career high 182 receiving yards on seven catches a week ago, two for a score, including the 70-yard touchdown. Here's third down and seven. They're getting noisy at Camp Randall. Reception. Bryson Thompson brought him down, well shy of the first down. We saw Kevin Cosgrove take off his headset. He's got to be very pleased with the way the defense played in that series. Trying to get the blocks downfield, Wright just does not get him. Too many red shirts, and there's Starks once again playing a terrific game. And maybe Cosgrove is right. Maybe this kid is going to be a star. So how did Jason Simpson? We haven't seen him all afternoon. It's the Fresno State's first part of the day. 
And Nick Davis will let it bounce. It takes a bulldog bounce and will go out at the 15-yard line. Simpson, the son of Bill Simpson, former safety for the Rams and for the Bills. I played against his father, a very good player. And Simpson, a very good punter, heading into this game, a terrific average. 50.3 yard average, number one in the nation coming in. Got to do some of those sideburns there. <laughs> you like that look? <laughs> These young college kids, <laughs> these styles go in and out. You're right. You and I are much more conservative than that. <laughs> I couldn't throw those anyway. Sorge handing it off to Anthony Davis. Trying to turn the corner, and he's out across the 23-yard line. Gives us an opportunity to tell you about 44 yards. A nice college football schedule. South Carolina and Georgia will go at it. Derek Watson coming off a 1,000-yard season for South Carolina. And the nightcap, number seven, Tennessee against Arkansas. These traditional rivals who usually meet in November will do battle here in September, 9 Eastern on ESPN2. Arkansas has got a pretty good runner in Cedric Cobbs. Offside against the defense. The penalty is declined. Second down. The other thing, Steve, is in that first game, they mentioned Derek Watson over 1,000 yards. Last week, Georgia had a tailback cap, but then Musa Smith will get over 100. I like his feet. He could be a good one. I told you earlier in the broadcast that Wisconsin, NCAA leading streak right now, eight consecutive seasons with a 1,000 yard back. Anthony Davis might make it nine straight. Oh, Davis is wrecked in the backfield. Dropped by Jake Probst. The kind of hitting we expected out of that Fresno State defense, Brian Kenny. Well, Steve, uh, that hurt back in Bristol. Meantime, coming up at the half, Chris Lee and Kirk will join us from Lincoln talking about Nebraska and Notre Dame. Mac Brown, his offense struggling against his old school, North Carolina and Texas. And Jim Tressel makes his debut for Ohio State. Rod Gilmore will join me to talk about all these games at the half. All right, Brian, thank you. Speaking of Tressel, evidently he's trying to install something new at Ohio State. He wants the team to sing the alma mater on their way off the field following home games, to sing it to the band, trying to get some more spirit and camaraderie out of the football team. Yeah, that's why. Third and three. Fresno State needs to call timeout. You can see Dan Brown screaming for it. This third down was much bigger for Fresno State than it was for Wisconsin. Now 52 seconds remaining, depending upon the punt by London. It's going to give Carr and his cohorts the opportunity to get in field goal range. Fresno State will spend a second time out. You certainly have to be impressed with the job Pat Hill has done. And everything, uh, attendance, season tickets, the program, academics are really on the rise at Fresno State. And coming into this game, and I see no reason why we, we don't continue to talk about the Bulldogs, they're the buzz of the college football world. Well, they didn't exactly come out of nowhere. You know, they were in the Silicon Valley Bowl last year, and Pat Hill, 21 and 10 as a WAC head coach. That's the best record of any of the current coaches. And so it's not as if they materialize. It's just now on the national scene. People are cognizant of it. And the great call by Hill, and everyone was talking about oh, this, yeah. they had trailed 34-7 to at halftime to Air Force in that Silicon Valley football classic with 14 seconds left. They had a chance to tie the game on a 33-yard field goal. They fake a 33-yard field goal, and the holder, Jason Simpson, threw an incomplete pass. Now, I can't say that this was on his mind at the time, but you have to think to yourself, if you're a recruit and you see that that's your head coach, is that somebody you want to go play for? Absolutely. Yep. He's got the good look going, got too. Got the Goose Gossage mustache working. I haven't seen one of those in quite a while. It does look like I think Goose has still got it, by the way. So I'm on up close with Gary Miller. Kirk Munden will punt it away. Gets a plenty of a rush there. Just got it away under pressure. Bernard Berrier at the 45 and stopped at midfield. 46 seconds left in the half. And Fresno State has one timeout remaining. But that's plenty of time, as, again, to remind those of you who won't be insulted by this. The clock does stop with a first down. And so 46 seconds, one timeout, plenty of time, certainly to get into the field goal range. Berrien doing so much for Fresno State. We should remind you that the, they have a terrific senior receiver in Charles Smith. The Bulldogs, too, sprained his right knee in an August scrimmage. They hope to have him back in a couple of weeks against Tulsa. Here's Carr. 
under pressure, steps up and releases to the running back Gaines. He was swung around and brought down at the 47. Kareem Timbers brought him down. That's a good open field tackle because Gaines had his momentum heading in the other direction. But Timbers able to drag him down and short of the first down. Now the clock continues to run. And one timeout remaining for Fresno State. Second and six from the 46. Car in a straight drop. Trying to set up the screen and didn't want it and instead is sacked. Brought down by Erasmus James. James is an interesting story. He's really only played football with one his senior year. Now he comes back, has three sacks in the first two games, and has another one today. And that's the third sack of the game by Wisconsin's defense. Got me spinning, my bell is ringing, it's making my head cuckoo. You got to believe me if you ever leave me. I don't know what I'd ever do without you. In Madison, the sun has gone away. The rain starting to fall. That last pass by Carfell incomplete. Looking to hook up with Marque Davis. Michael Broussard had the coverage to bat it away. Carr took a shot on that one. I'm thinking here with 10 seconds remaining, you got to either throw one up and take a shot, or maybe you'd be content to get out of there. For whatever reason, these last three plays, the pass rush by Wisconsin has been outstanding. No timeouts remaining. Jason Simpson will be back in to punt. One of a few junior college transfers on Bulldogs. Simpson punted away. The rain really coming down now. Nick Davis will let that one bounce. And it'll bounce into the end zone. There's one second left on the clock. One second remains on the clock. I thought if you're a homer, you're supposed to just let it go out, right? I think if you're on either team. <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah exactly. One second left, but they'll have to have a snap. Although I can still remember years ago, I think it was during the strike season of 87, when uh, Philadelphia was playing the Cowboys. And it was the end of the game. Everybody assumed he's going to kneel down. And, and uh, Cunningham fakes the kneel down and comes up and throws right. a long pass. Do you remember that? Well, let's see. Look at that. Georgie will take a knee. And that'll do it. First half is complete. And what an entertaining first half it was. Wisconsin will go to the locker room with a 20 to 10 lead over Fresno State. We'll see you for the second half. But first, for the halftime festivities, back to the studio in Bryan County. Well, a couple of people that maybe you hadn't anticipated doing as well as they have. You see Sorge's combined total yards doing most of that through the air. Of course, Scott Starks, we had talked about the young freshman with his second pick of the year, and a big one, too, that set up this 50-yard field goal by the freshman, Allen, who certainly has to have a lot of confidence. And, of course, Alvarez now having a lot of confidence in him. Anthony Davis nearly tore off a 68-yard rushing touchdown. It was called back because of a penalty. Davis has been the early season story for Wisconsin's offense. He came into this game number one in total rushing yards, and he has been at it again all afternoon. You get the sense every time he touches the football, it could be a big gainer. And truthfully, Steve, I really believe that he has been the difference here in the first half. He's the reason why you see the numbers. This number is a little bit deceptive because because about 50 of those yards came on the reverse. They have not been able to establish the run between the tackles. But Davis, 13 carries for 87 yards. Everything about the offense for Wisconsin has revolved around him and his ability to get up the field and move the sticks. Fresno State will receive. Bernard Berrien and Bryce McGill are back deep for the Bulldogs. Berrien two, McGill five, and Adam Espinoza will kick it away for Wisconsin. The rain has started towards the end of the first half, has subsided once again. 
second half is underway. And it is Bernard Kelly out to the 25, the 30, he's the 40. Got he's got, got a one chance. man to beat. He's got to be the speech to down the sideline. Forget it. Wow. Bernard Kelly. Wow. 96 yard kickoff return to start the second half. So much for the fatigue that he felt with the catches and all the kick returns he had had up to this point. Great special teams on the part of Fresno State, just creating a chasm here. Take a look at Barry and look how things open up in the middle. Right as he's going to veer here, take a look at the blocking. Great job at the point of attack coming across Lyman. Great block there by number 31. That happens to be just Garen Baines, a reserve defensive back. And here Barry gets to the sidelines, and as you pointed out, he shows some speed, 6'2", 190 pounds. Look at the two strides, beautiful. Five yards and two strides, I'd love to see that. I think Starks was the last man that might have had a shot at him, and he is the speedster, Berrien. Now they go for two, right, right get it. The two-point conversion is successful. Mark Anelli. Steve, I, I, Steve, I think it was Alex, Alex Rico, their tight end, who was the one that got the snap and punched it in. And of course, boy, how courageous on the part of Pat Hill to take a <laughs> shot like that early on. Just rocking the house. 77,000 silent found laryngitis. Wow. Berrien had an 88-yard punt return for a touchdown last season against Nevada. Here, a 96-yard kick return. Well, let's give credit where credit is due in the wedge. You see it at full speed. There's Barrett. I mean, he just goes completely untouched, as you pointed out. Here's Starks over here, but he's got, he's got no chance. He's just not going to get it. Barrion just does a great job, but again, the blocking was just outstanding there for whatever reason. Wisconsin caught on their heels, and inevitably what happens, because I did this for a number of years, Steve, you run downfield, you think somebody else is going to make an attack. Well, 11 guys thought the same thing as a result. <laughs> This 50-yard field goal by the freshman Allen, who certainly has to have a lot of confidence. And of course, Alvarez now having a lot of confidence in him. Anthony Davis nearly tore off a 68-yard rushing touchdown. It was called back because of a penalty. Davis has been the early season story for Wisconsin's offense. He came into this game number one in total rushing yards. And he has been at it again all afternoon. You get the sense every time he touches the football, it could be a big gainer. And truthfully, Steve, I really believe that he has been the difference here in the first half. He's the reason why you see the numbers. This number is a little bit deceptive because about 50 of those yards came on the reverse. They have not been able to establish the run between the tackles. But Davis, 13 carries for 87 yards. Everything about the offense for Wisconsin has revolved around him and his ability to get up the field and move the sticks. Fresno State will receive. Bernard Berrien and Bryce McGill are back deep for the Bulldogs. Berrien two, McGill five, and Adam Espinoza will kick it away for Wisconsin. The rain that started towards the end of the first half has subsided once again. Second half is underway. And it is Bernard Kelly out to the 25, the 30, the 40. He's got, got a one chance. man to beat. He's got to be the speech to down the sideline. It. Forget it. Wow. Bernard Kelly. Wow. 96-yard kickoff Very return nice. to start the second half. So much for the fatigue that he felt with the catches and all the kick returns he had had up to this point. Great special teams on the part of Fresno State just creating a chasm here. Take a look at Barry and look how things open up in the middle. Right as he's going to veer here, take a look at the blocking. Great job at the point of attack coming across Lyman. Great block there by number 31. That happens to be just Garen Baines, a reserve defensive back. And here Barry gets to the sidelines. And as you pointed out, he shows some speed. 6'2", 190 pounds. Look at the two strides. Beautiful. Five yards and two strides. I'd love to see that. I think Starks was the last man that might have had a shot at him. And he is the speedster. Very Now they go for two. Yeah, right get it. The two-point conversion is successful. Mark Anelli. Steve, I, I, Steve, I think it was Alex, Alex Rico, their tight end, who was the one that got the snap and punched it in. And of course, boy, how courageous on the part of Pat Hill to take a <laughs> shot like that early on. Just rocking the house. 77,000 silent found laryngitis. Wow. 
Berrien had an 88-yard punt return for a touchdown last season against Nevada. Here, a 96-yard kick return. Well, let's give credit where credit is due in the wedge. You see it at full speed. There's Berrien. I mean, he just goes completely untouched, as you pointed out. Here's Starks over here, but he's got, he's got no chance. He's just not going to get it. Berrien does, does a great job, but again, the blocking was just outstanding there for whatever reason. Wisconsin caught on their heels, and inevitably what happens, because I did this for a number of years, Steve, you run downfield, you think somebody else is going to make the tackle. Well, 11 guys thought the same thing. The result <laughs> is a huge first play for the Bulldogs here in the second stanza. 16 seconds in to the second half, and we've got a two-point game. Man, has the complexion of this one changed. And Brian Kenny is now cutting in on every other network That's we right. have. <laughs> That's right. People all over the college football world are seeing what you just saw just moments ago. Here's Nick Davis on the kick return. He's out to the 28-yard line. Brian must be done with that cut in because he's got a cut in for us. Today we do indeed. And of course, Syracuse of a rough week against the Vols. And here, trailing Central Florida. James Mungro will go through those three yards. So Syracuse does have a lead on Central Florida. It's 14-10 in the third. All right, Brian, thank you. What a start to this second half. Wisconsin now to try to settle some things down. Sam Evans in motion on first down and 10. And hands it off to Jerome Pettis, the ball carrier. And he's out to the 30-yard line. You know, we were talking about how annoying it is. Come on, what are you guys doing? You're going to kick it. You're just going to kick it. So why are you? Oh, what? What are you doing? What are you doing? No, wait. Come to the side. That's unbelievable. Those of you who have not seen this play, that is legal. It is okay. And that the case is Bobby Bynum, who's the one who laterals and gives Greco the opportunity to get into the ends, and as a heads-up player. And let's see later on how big that one point could be, Steve. Greco is Ronnie Lott is his favorite all-time athlete. I'd see Ronnie be proud of Greco on that play. Here's Sorgi now, firing, and he's picked off! Intercepted! It's Tyree Sands, and look out, here come the Bulldogs! And this is a great play by Sams because Evans sets down, runs a poor hook route. Sams is able to step right in front of it. Sams is not in his back pedal. Take it at the bottom. Take a look right here. He's supposed to get his hips turned. He never turns his hips. He sits on this route. And as a result of sitting on the route, he can cut in front of Evans and get the pick. Huge first couple of plays for the Fresno State Bulldogs. And right now, Dan Brown has to be a pretty happy man. That man, Alvarez, very disconcerted at this point. In 68 seconds of football, Fresno State has a 94-yard kickoff return, a two-point conversion, and an interception, and a Rodney Wright reception. They're down to the 20. I wonder if anything the coaches said at halftime still apply, Dave Ryan. Well, Steve, no question about it. You know, I talked with Pat Hill before the team hit the field for the second half, and you know from meeting him, guys, he's very blunt. He gets right to the point. He said to his team at halftime, we did not come all the way from Fresno, California, halfway across the country to Madison, Wisconsin, to lose this game. The only victory is a victory. He said his team had to get going defensively, especially, and they had a big play here in the interception of, of course. A touchdown return really got this bench going. Emotion is running high, guys. Now, let me All right, get, Dave, Paris Gaines on the ball carry there. Let me get ahead just for a second. If for whatever reason Wisconsin stiffens, this is really bizarre, that extra point, and this is what I'm trying to get at, and that is the fact that now that extra point, they kick a field goal. Instead of tying the score now, they go into the lead. Psychologically, that could be a really big deal. Well, you get the sense, you know, Fresno State hanging around, hanging around, and Wisconsin was going to hit them with a the knockout punch. But it just hasn't happened to this point. Fresno State is looking to take the lead. Here's Carr in all sorts of traffic and taken down shy of the 15. Well, once again, it's going to be a crucial third down, and Kevin Cosgrove has been frustrated, I think, by his Wisconsin charges and inability to thwart people on third down last week and this week. I'm guessing third, I'm guessing. 36 here inside the run, so they're going to come with a few people to try and put some pressure on Carr. Don't give him much time. Gaines is the single setback. And here's Carr looking left, throwing, and completing. Hitting Rodney Wright. Touchdown! Wow! David Carr to Rodney Wright! And Steve
Steve, that's what we were talking about when we said that he's a little bit, he plays bigger than the 5'9", 175. Timbers had the opportunity to drop him about the six yard line, but the youngster went right through the tackle. Great call, here he comes underneath, gets good block, he catches him in a blitz, right cuts back, Starks gets blocked, this is what I'm talking about, Timbers has him, right? I guess not, I guess not. Right in for the score, and the, and the reaction of Coach Hill says it all. Now he's adding it up, we go for one or we go for two here, and that's why they're calling timeout to do that very thing, is debate whether or not to go for the two-point conversion. Two minutes, 34 seconds into the third quarter. Not only has Fresno State wiped out a 10-point deficit, they've taken the lead. I think they'd want to kick and go up by five because the net forces Wisconsin, if for whatever reason they score again, to go for two. Looks like there was some movement on the line. Might have been Bryant. Bryant's got a piece of the quarterback, and Carr overthrew his intended target. Jeremy Johnson, but again, there's a flag, and it looked like it'll go against Wisconsin. Everybody is always discussing this point, and they have their little chart of points, but now by being up by four points, if you go up by five, as we see the offside, I think that's what you want to do. I really do, because now, when the other team scores, they're an odd number. That puts them at odds. Offside. Touchdown wise. On the defense. To go for Half two. Half the distance to the goal. Replay the try. Now, if for whatever reason they get the two-point conversion, then of course it's a great play. But if they don't, right. now they're in a position where they score a touchdown, get an extra point, then they're up by a field goal as opposed to just two points. And it was not a hasty decision. They burn a timeout. Yep. Yep. They use a timeout Good two point. and a half minutes into the third quarter to make sure they make the right decision and then the right call. So they move it closer. This is the two-point conversion. It's barely in motion. Here's Carr, right side, Great makes time. the option, and keeps it. And as David I, Carr for the two-point conversion. <laughs> and as I told you, they needed to go for two points here. It was a good decision. <laughs> you had it all wrong. Remember, and the key is to go up by six points at this point <laughs> of the game. <laughs> Always better than being up by four. But let me tell you something. Again, giving credit where credit is due. Andy Ludwood, remember on that crucial third down earlier, they went with the option. Why is this guy running the option? Are you kidding me? But he goes in standing up that's a great great call going to the weak side and i tell you what coach hill's pushing all the right buttons here early in the second half it has been a bulldog third quarter up to this point albeit short we touched on something earlier about david carr and comparisons to other quarterbacks you look like one of his favorite targets in rodney Wright. and you know, i went up against joey harrington last week everybody's talking about him for the highs but remember the coaching staff said hey we would take carr at this point one of the coaches who will remain nameless mentioned the point. I said, can you compare him for me? And he says, now, I don't want to be disparaging to Harrington, but Carr is a good one. And, and we didn't have to read between the lines to understand what he was talking about. Maybe he has everything Harrington has outside of that $250,000 billboard in Midtown Manhattan pushing him for the Heisman. He's got a wife and, he's got a wife and son, too. He's got that going for him as well. And hopefully we'll get a chance to visit with them. Later on this afternoon. What? I'm sorry. Wasn't it 20 to 10 just a little while ago? Yeah, the other way. Yeah, 20 to 10. Wow. What a turnaround. We've only played 234 in this third quarter. And Wisconsin will get the football back. Nick Davis from the 10. Davis is hit down at the 20 yard line. Let's hook up again with Brian Kenny. Steve, get back to Virginia Tech and the Hokies against Western Michigan going to the fullback, Jared Ferguson former walk-on now a big part of this team rumbling through in for the touchdown and Virginia Tech now has a 24 to nothing lead and uh, just to get you up to date and I think well this is about it for this game 56 to nothing just want to keep you apprised of the latest scoring Steve Todd Brian what happened to national security <laughs> forgotten about that for the time being and here's Sorgi now, going to put it on the ground to Anthony Davis. That's been the best play this afternoon for the Wisconsin offense. Alan Harper always around the football for Fresno State. And certainly the body language of Fresno State indicates defensively anyway that, hey, we're back in this thing, we're excited, great pursuit. I'm really surprised. I mentioned the fact that how key AD has been for Wisconsin. Remember last week, this defense, Fresno State Bulldogs, held Heisman hopeful. Ken Simonton to only 42 yards on 15 carries. So, I, frankly, I was surprised that Davis is doing as well as he has been doing. That was Simonton's worst rushing game in nearly three years. Here's Sorgi now, got pressure from behind, felt it and throws, overthrew his intended target, Nick Davis. This has been a tremendous college football game today. We anticipate more of the same for you tonight. 
Georgia in their outstanding receiver combo with Damian Gary and Terrence Edwards. They'll go at it tonight with South Carolina and then Tennessee and Arkansas. Tennessee quarterback Casey Clawson completed 62% of his passes as a freshman. The number seven ranked Bowles will go, Bowles will go at it against the Razorbacks. Remember, I think it was three years ago when Tennessee won the national championship down there. I think it was it was at Tennessee. Arkansas had him beat. There was a minute 30 left in the game. Clint Sterner fades back and drops the ball. Do you remember that? Clint Sterner, yeah, boy, that's going to be a great game. Here's third and nine. We've had a great game today. Glad you're with us on this college football Saturday from Madison. Here's Sorge stepping up now. Takes the hit, throws the ball, and what a catch! Lee Evans through heavy traffic. There is a flag on the play. Great concentration out of the wide receiver. And it's a great job by Sorge, who's not known as a guy that moves around a lot. The flag was downfield, so I'm anticipating that it's defensive, and they'll let it go. Pass interference against the defense. The penalty is declined. First down. One of the things that I was concerned about, Steve, for the Wisconsin faithful, take a look. The ball is at the line of scrimmage at the 21. Watch where Sorgi throws this ball from. Is he behind the line of scrimmage? Look at that. He's sideways just a little bit. Take a look. He's able to deliver the ball just in front of the three. Heads up on the part of Sorgi, and what a great catch by Evans in traffic. Again, in case you're just joining us, Brooks Bollinger, by the way, has been medically cleared to play. He's still got the bruised liver, but medically cleared to play. We were told we'd only see him in an emergency situation. Sorgi started, he's gone the distance to this point. Handed off to Anthony Davis, reversing his field. And he's knocked out in the 45 after a good run. But the crowd urging for a late hit on the sideline. It's been out of the field of Dave Ryan. Yeah, Steve, you talk about the injury to Brooks Bollinger, the bruised liver. Team trainer Denny Helwig tells me the injury was discovered with a CT scan after that Virginia game. The diagnosis with several general and trauma surgeons uh, were consulted, about seven or eight, actually, in addition to NFL team doctors and trainers about how long Bollinger should be out of the lineup. The consensus is a bruised liver actually heals very quickly and rarely the player is injured again in the game of football. The CT scan yesterday showed the bruise is completely healed and he is ready to go if they need him. All right, Dave, thank you. Presents an interesting problem. Come next week if Sorgi plays well and Wisconsin wins. Here's Anthony Davis now, the ball carrier. He's banging down inside the 40-yard line. Continues to churn it out. Davis going over the 100-yard mark. 102 yards, 17 carries for the running back. Well, he's on pace, actually, to get over his average. Coming into this game, he was averaging right around 139 yards per game in those first two contests. And certainly, Fresno State is going to have to strengthen, strengthen their run defense a little bit. Davis came in number 11 in the country, rushing that's average, but number one in total rushing yards. Georgie will give it to him again. Trying the right side off the side. Breaking tackle. Got a couple of good blocks there. 32-yard the line. He's knocked down finally by Maurice Rodriguez. We hit Brian Kenny. Steve and the little guys are rising up. Northern Illinois going up against Illinois. And look, the big play defensively, Northern Illinois, they stop him there, and Northern Illinois still has a 6-3 lead. And Vanderbilt hanging tough, still tied up with Alabama there in the third quarter. It's 6-6. Steve, Todd? Lots of single-digit numbers around the nation early on in the third quarter, except, of course, here we've got 46 points. Davis, 5, 7, and 6 yards rushing on successive plays, and they'll try it again. One of the things that Davis does in addition to, we talked about his 100 meter speed, take a look at his feet and how quickly they operate behind the line. This is the play before, it cuts back to the outside, right, left, right, left. It reminds me a little bit, although that's far too high a praise. Remember there's a number 20 for Detroit, the name of Barry Sanders who used to run like that and oddly enough, similar dimensions. I'm not gonna see Barry this season again, are we? I thought your, your old buddy was gonna try to get him back in the I did too, what's Detroit? up? Matt Miller, I thought he went to the door and said, come on, come back and play. Evidently not convincing enough. Now, if Matt can talk me into playing, <laughs> then maybe Barry would come back to run behind him. What do you think? We saw Wisconsin 5 of 9 on third down. It's been a real problem. And the ball was snapped as Sorgi was turning to the official to signal a timeout. And they catch a break there because the timeout was called. Now, Barry Alvarez had not shown too much emotion heading into the first half because certainly things were going his way. You saw that placid interview he had with Dave Ryan. 
Now all of a sudden he's very excited, Prior to the very snap, animated. Delay a game against the offense. Still third down. The interview with Dave Ryan, which you didn't get a chance to see in that conversation, he mentioned to him that he was pleased with his offense, things are going fairly well, he liked the way his team was operating. Now suddenly you can see by his animation and his emotion that he's not terribly pleased with the way things are going, and especially there with the clock running down. Offense not getting it. That's actually a huge play, Steve, because now if they don't convert here, you're looking at about a 53 or 54 yard field goal, which is right on the cusp of Allen's range. Brian White, the offensive coordinator, to us third down, his single biggest concern. They were just two for 14 last week against Oregon. Here on third and eight, Sorge dumps it off short of his intended to target the tight end, Mark Anelli, and that'll bring up the fourth down. Fourth down. Are you surprised by this? Because I really thought that 50-yarder made it made it pretty well. Instead, they're opting for the punt. Does this surprise you? Allen had connected earlier from 50 and 37, but it's Kirk Munden on to punt it away. He's standing at his 50-yard line. Bernard Berrien is back at the 10. I'm surprised. I really thought they'd kick it. Kid's got confidence now. He's got it working. Why not? Interesting call, and Munden will boot it, Barry will let it bounce. And they got a piece, but not enough, as it goes into the end zone, and Fresno State will operate first and 10 from their own 20 when the Bulldogs come back. David Carr will lead the offense back out of the field, and we'll learn more about this young man when we come back. It's gone quiet. Never heard 77,000 people so quiet. Wisconsin had a 20 to 10 lead at halftime. They find themselves trailing by six, and Fresno State has the football. They go on the ground to Paris Gaines. No gain on the play. Let's get an update now from Brian Kenny. Steve, it's a new NCAA record. Georgia Southern and Delaware, and Adrian Peterson of Georgia Southern with his 33rd consecutive game in the regular season going over 100 yards, 33 in a row. Archie Griffin, by the way, has the 1A record with 31 straight, guys. Ryan, thank you. Second down and nine. They get games a gain of one. That's from the 21. Send the man in motion. Carl will throw. Looking left, throwing and completing. Sideline. He's able to hook up with Marque Davis. Very close to a first down. Let's join in the field, Dave Ryan. Steve, we talked a lot about Fresno State quarterback David Carr being a family man, married to wife Melody and a proud father, a 16-month-old son, Austin. Fatherhood is something he really enjoys. I wanted a boy, and I got one, and he's a lot of fun, and just, he's getting to the point now where he's running around and playing football a little bit and saying ball and dad, and every time a football game pops on the screen, he's saying dad's name. So, I mean, he'll, he'll, get, he'll get him straight, but it's a lot of fun. A good look at Melody and Austin Carr along with David as David's on the run. And he will just throw that one away and it'll bring up a second down and ten. I don't know if, I don't know if you thought that was a good picture or not, but let's ask Melody. David Carr's wife joins us from their home in Bakersfield, California, where they're watching the game on ESPN. Melody, were you okay with that picture? <laughs> yeah, that was an okay picture. That was a good family one. Tell us uh, what it's like there in Bakersfield and what's uh, what's it like at home? You know, we're all praising the Lord right now. They're ahead. We're so excited. We knew they could come back. They did that in some games last year. Uh, so we're just excited, jumping up and down, screaming. Melody, this is Todd Christensen. I was curious, how nervous was your husband coming into a game of this magnitude? You know, David does not ever act nervous. I asked him, are you nervous? And he's, no, we're just excited. We're anxious. I think the family, we're all nervous for him. Flags fly on that play. Looked like there was some motion before the snap on the second down and 10 play. Melody, you have some 20 people there, lots of family, relatives, and friends. What are we serving while we're watching the football game? <laughs> well, most of us are too nervous to eat right now. We're just watching the game. We had some uh, donuts because it's early here this morning, but right now we're just watching the game. Melody, I'm interested in where he, he tapes his finger as a reminder of you. Was that yeah. something that you guys had talked about, or is that something he did on his own? No, he did that the first scrimmage. Um, I noticed he had his finger taped, and, well, actually, I thought it was his ring first, and then after the game, he showed me that he did that for me. So that was all him. Talking with Melody Carr, the wife of quarterback David, who's on the run to his right. Here's Carr throwing. 
And it is caught. A completion there at the 40-yard line. It's okay to cheer on the air, Melody. That's all right, Melody. Well, I know. Don't worry my, about I had to go in the other room. My family's screaming. 14-yard <laughs> completion there as you look at it again. Are we doing your husband the right way in this broadcast tonight? The Heisman comparisons, all the talk about not making mistakes. Are we treating him okay? Oh, you guys are treating him wonderfully. Wonderfully. I, re I read Thank the you. article. I read the article, Melanie, about how all the agents have been calling you, trying to get you on the good side. Yeah. Hey, they're pretty nice. I enjoy it. <laughs> You're going to be getting more calls if he keeps this up on third and one. Hands true. off the Paris Gaines, and a, a bulldog helmet goes flying. And it should be enough for the first down. Melody, can you get a can you give us a sense in the community there in the valley in particular what it would mean for Fresno State to pull off this upset? You know, they, oh, it would be huge. We have tried so hard, you know, to get recognized here, and they're finally doing it this year. The whole team has been working really hard for this, and uh, it would it would just be a blessing from God for us to win this. Melody, uh, he's getting a lot of attention. The team's getting a lot of attention as we introduce him and the Fresno State team, really, to most of the country on first down and 10. After this play, we're going to ask you to tell us something about him. Okay. As Paris Gaines has the big gain across midfield, and he's down to the 46-yard line. Pickup of 12. Joey Bose brought him down. So tell us something about David that, you know, maybe he wouldn't be happy you told us about on national television. Oh, you got like gosh. A, a little family secret, something most people family don't know secret. about him? Oh, that's a hard one. I can't I can't think of anything right off the top of my head right now. Then just, tell a, just tell the football fans out there something uh, they might be interested in about David. You no, know, David is just, he's a man of God. He's a wonderful, loving husband and dad and his family. We're all just so proud of him. He's worked really, really hard for this, and we're all just very proud of him. Gaines slams into the hole, down to the 43-yard line. Melody, people are looking at your boy in the picture, and they're saying to themselves, is it inevitable that Austin's going to follow in his father's footsteps and play football? Well, yeah, he's, David's trying. David's already got him practicing throwing that football. <laughs> so, yeah, it's inedible. How about the name uh, Austin? Where did that come from, Melody? Well, David has a big Texas family. His younger brother, Derek, is in Dallas. Uh, but uh, it's just, it's a name that we just agreed on, actually, and, and we like that name. Marque Davis there. Probably has a cousin named Irving, too. Her. <laughs> Irving, Texas. <laughs> Melody, thank you so much for joining us. I, no problem. I think, thank you. I, I think most of the country is finding out how good he is, but uh, you knew how good a guy and a quarterback he was probably a long, long time yes, ago. Yes, he Th did. His family is a young boy. You enjoy the game, and uh, stay, uh, stay tuned to ESPN, okay, throughout the day and night, all right? Okay, thank you very much. All right, see you later. All right, bye-bye. That's uh, Melody Carr, the wife of David, the star quarterback of Fresno State. She probably wanted to get back to the other room because this is a big play. Here's third and 11 from the 47. Carr pumps, got plenty of time. Touch pass across the middle, and it's dropped. Would have been a good catch by Marque Davis, but that ball was there on the money from Carr. And Marque Davis was his second or third choice. You can see it, and Carr knows how frustrated he is because he had a touchdown. He needed to take just a little bit off the ball, but he was coming off his outside receiver. Watch him look to the right. Now he looks to the right. That's where he wants to go. Pump fake, but it's not there. Now watch he flicks the ball down the middle of the field. He's got him, but he puts just a little bit too much on the ball. That's his frustration because he knew he had that one. But how good is he to be able to come off to his second or third guy, and that's what he's commenting to right there. The numbers on Carr. The interception is interesting. First interception he has thrown this season. Jason Simpson is back to punt. Nick Davis is the punt returner. And Davis will let it bounce and it will bounce into the end zone. Wisconsin finds themselves trailing by six. They have the football. They're at home here in the third quarter point lead on Wisconsin. Some injury concern for the Fresno State team on the sideline. Paris gains a sprained neck. Trainer says he should return the next time the Bulldogs get the ball. They do not have starting right guard Victor Tafini. He's out with a left elbow strain getting x-rays now, guys. Not sure if he'll be back in this game. We'll get evaluated later on. All right, Dave, that could really hurt. Gaines has done the bulk of the work carrying the football. He's an offensive lineman as well. They have the lead maybe trying to milk some clock. That could really hurt. As it's Sorgi 
It's not going to matter, though. They got offside. Flags down all over the place. A huge recovery for Fresno State, but a flag is down there offsides. And how frustrating it's going to be for those two defensive linemen thinking, man, why couldn't I hold my water? They look like you got to be kidding me. Yep, very good. Very good. Oh, you got to be kidding me. And I think he said it again. There's the indication in the call. Let's get the call now from Brian Kenny. Brian. All right, see, so we'll clean this up. Go to Illinois and Northern Illinois. And how about the Illini? Beat Cal last week 44 to 17. But here, Kirk Kittner to Walter Young. And Illinois finally has a lead. It's 10 6. They're in the fourth quarter. Meantime, Buckeyes under new head coach Jim Tressel have it under control now in the fourth quarter. It's 28 to 7 over Akron. Steve Todd. All right, Brian, thank you. Trestle error trying to get off to a good start. Columbus. Be next week for San Diego State. Problems with the snap again. And again, the flags come in. Jason Stewart. The pressure for Fresno State. I, I, this makes no sense, and I say this, Steve, because you get used, as a defensive lineman, you get used to the cadence of a quarterback. You get used to that. It's not like it's a brand new guy who comes in, suddenly goes, instead of hot, 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 it's going hot, 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 hot. Prior to the snap. Offside by the defense. First down. Take a look at the first one right here. This, these are the people that jump and how frustrating that is. Burley comes across. It's a good call by the official. Now here it is. That one's a little bit more obvious. Number 91, that's Jason Stewart who comes across into the neutral zone. Pat Hill not very happy. Penalties have been a problem for Fresno State. Continue to be a problem here today. 15 seconds left uh, to get the snap away. This time they do. Hey, no flag. Here's Sorgi now under pressure. There's a flag. Looked like it'd be holding behind Sorgi. He's able to complete the pass. Able to complete it to Nick Davis, who cuts it up field. He's down at the 45-yard line for Mark Daly. Finally going down. <laughs> yes, we got it too, Coach. We got the holding. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. It's going to come back. When the referee makes the call, then that's an easy one. Pat Hill and Fresno State had 22 penalties in the first two games, and yet they went 2-0. Here's the pass rush. Now watch as he rolls to his right. Watch as he rolls to his right. You're going to see it. There was the hold that they called. Good job by the official to see Holding it. Holding by the offense. Still first down. But then again, well, there's only two things that you're looking at, right? You're looking at holding and taking care of the quarterback. So when Ben Johnson got caught that time. It was 56. Bring up a first down and 20. Boy, is he animated. He can't, let, he can't seem to let go of that offside. Did he look very satisfied with that last call? No. Yeah, I got no. one for them, too. Keep waiting for him to come in in the ninth inning with two guys on. <laughs> first down and 20. Under five to play here in the third. Here's Sorgi throwing and completing to Lee Evans. Devon Banks forced him out. We get an update from Brian Kenny. Steve, we'll get you back to Texas and North Carolina and the Longhorns extending their lead here. Cedric Benson punches that in, and now it's 26 to 14. Another surprise here as South Florida leads Pittsburgh now 14 to nothing in the second quarter. South Florida, by the way, played Northern Illinois last week and lost. See at the bottom there, Brian Antonio Bryant, their outstanding wide receiver, injured. And that obviously is part of the reason for the Pittsburgh zero right now. Canelli in motion. Put it back the other way, and they hand it off to Anthony Davis. Davis breaking some tackles. He's staying on his feet out to the 36-yard line. Allen Harper finally fell on top of him. Davis does a nice job of, of waiting and being patient behind the blockers. You mentioned Anelli going in the other direction. It's kind of like an extra pulling guard. Instead of running ahead, as sometimes young runners will do, he bides his time, waits for Anelli. And even though it wasn't a big game, he got as much as he could out of it. We should mention at this point, Steve, the offensive line for Wisconsin, very inexperienced. Last year, of course, they had a number of guys who ended up in the pros. Casey Robuck comes to mind. But now, they have a lot of inexperience up front, although that man, Al Johnson, Albrecht, believes can be an award winner. This is third down and three. Here's Sorgi firing and picked off. Wow. What an interception by Devon Banks. 
and Sorgi is picked clean for the second time this afternoon. And Sorgi's not very happy with himself. They've come to the well a little bit too often with that one, Steve. They've gone with the short hook route. Banks decides once again, you've got to get that you got to get that defensive back to turn his hips and run the other way. If he's not out of his back pedal, then he can charge forward. Take a look. You're going to see he's not going to get out of his back pedal. He's going to come forward and make the interception. Sorge, you need to look the other direction. There he is. He never gets out of his back pedal. Charges quickly, shows his quickness, cuts right in front. Yet another turnover for Fresno State. Banks got his chance last year at all whack free safety. Anthony Limbrick was injured. Harris gains the ball carrier. We let you listen into the crowd, and you can hear there's, there's really nothing to listen to. And it's good. You can see Banks. Banks is saying that. Come on, be quiet. Be quiet. That was a great pick, and it's good to see Gaines, by the way, Steve. Dave was talking about the injury. The injury to the neck, and he's back in the ballgame. Pick up a second down and seven. Gaines will stay in there. You see the turnovers. Wisconsin so good in turnovers. In fact, the best in the country going back to 98. They're on the wrong end of the turnover battle so far today. Screen pass to Rocky Wright. Stays inbound and gets the first down. On the completion from Carr. It could have been a lot more than a first down because of the situation once again of the footing. Wright cuts back and loses his footing. You can see his reaction. He shakes his head and says, man, there's a lot more to that than I was able to get as a result of slipping. First and 10, clock moving. Here's Paris Keynes down shy of the 20-yard line. It'll bring up a second down and short. Nick Grison made the stop. Joey Bose, we've mentioned his name a few times today, the senior from Villa Park, California. Such a big part of that defensive backfield for Wisconsin. Well, he is our singularis specialis, somebody who is extremely versatile. He has played all positions, and Coach Alvarez pointed out the fact that if tomorrow somebody was hurt, he could just step into the other place. Games the ball carrier down to the 15-yard line. And it should be enough for the first down. For more on Joey, let's join Dave Ryan. All right, guys, Leo Bose is here. He's missed one game, Indiana 1998, in Joey's four-year career, coming all the way from Southern California. Why'd you miss the one game? What's the deal? Uh, I had a commitment with my younger daughter at her high school. <laughs> Pancake breakfast I couldn't get out of. <laughs> Over 110,000 frequent flyer miles you've racked up. Let's watch this play. We'll talk more about it, Steve. All right, Dave, thank you. Here's Carr trying to set the screen up and could not. Looking to go to Paris Gaines out of the backfield. Delante McGrew made sure that didn't happen. Dave, back to you. So you've had a lot of frequent flyer miles. Yeah. That's the good news. Do you give them away to family and friends? Well, I bring my wife and daughter. Uh, two daughters are here tonight. My wife's been able to make the last two years, and the daughters are both living in the Midwest now, so they're coming every game this year, too. So. At what point did you make the commitment, Leo? You just weren't going to miss a game, period. Uh, when he was a freshman. When he came to Wisconsin, I made that commitment. If he was playing, I was be here. I know it's dramatic. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you very much. Flags fly as the ball is snapped. Dave, thank you. We thank Leo Bose as well. How about Dave? That's exactly the question I would have asked. You missed one game. Which game did you miss and why? That's exactly the journalistic question to ask. And uh, Joey continues to make his mom and dad proud. Two-time, two straight years, academic All-Big Ten honors, in addition to being a fine defensive And the thing that I like was the excuse was also family-related, right? It was <laughs> right. a sibling. That was terrific. It was pancake breakfast. Pancake breakfast are killer. Absolutely. Sometimes a nuisance. You just can't miss them, though. <laughs> Second down and 15 now. Fresno State by six and looking for more. Here's Carr on the pump. Has a man, corner of the end zone, over through the intended target, Bernard Berrien. Number two, Berrien. Once more, an update. Here's Brian Kenny. Steve Syracuse losing to Georgia Tech, losing to Tennessee, and in a little bit of danger here in the fourth quarter, James Mungro, he'll go in for 15 yards and spread it out. Syracuse looking for its first win of the year, now leading at 21 to 10, and Alabama with a field goal, so the Crimson Tide now leading Vandy 9 to 6. Fellas? All right, Brian, here we go. Pivotal play, third and 15, 77,000. Haven't heard much from them in the second half. They're getting loud at Camp Randall. 
Need a defensive stop. Here's Carr throwing and completing. But it'd be well shy of the first down. Alec Greco, who scored on the two-point conversion earlier. So many times you hear, okay, you've got third and 12, run a 12-yard route. No, this was a good decision, and here's why. You want to get something conservative, move it up a little bit. Now you're looking at about a 33 or 34-yard field goal for the kicker. And with this field goal, Steve, if they're able to make it, that means that Wisconsin has to get two scores to get back in the game. So this is a very pivotal field goal for the Fresno State Bulldogs. Asen Asperhuav is on. Will attempt a 34-yard field goal. It is on the way, and it is good. Wow! Something brewing here in Madison, Wisconsin. As the Bulldogs open up a 29-20 lead over Wisconsin. And a look at our Coors Light storyline. The first half very different from the second. Well, of course, the big play is right here. Berrien's kick return just completely ignited Fresno State as now they have outscored the Badgers 16 to nothing here in the third quarter. And Wisconsin just cannot seem to get untracked offensively as a result of that. They're back on their heels. They don't know what to think. But again, there's a lot of football remaining to be played. And certainly 77,000 faithful that are here who can inspire their charges to get back into it. You know, week in, week out, as, as Fresno State tries to build something here, you have to think, hey, this is the week we see, you know, the story end, the feel-good story come to an end. But you, you really have to be impressed. And just think back to that first drive by Wisconsin. That could have been very disheartening. The crowd super into this football game. Fresno State is not going away anytime soon. Well, the other thing, too, with regards to that is you're down 20 to 10 at halftime and everybody's, you know, and you're away from home. It's very easy to say, well, we worked hard, we did our best, and not worry about it. But instead, they come out, and as Dave pointed out in his interview with the coach, there are no moral victories. They want to win this thing, and right now, they're on top by nine. Here's Vicentino to put his foot into it. Nick Davis is back at the three-yard line. Davis will take it straight up the field now. Out to the 30, the 35, the 40. Davis still on his feet, and he is finally brought down across midfield. What a return for Nick Davis. And remember earlier in the game, Steve, that's exactly what Wisconsin needed. And watch the number of tackles that he breaks. Coming into this game, one of the compliments that was highly paid of the Fresno State defense and special teams is their ability to make tackles. But watch the number of tackles that Davis breaks. They just cannot get him on the ground with the arm tackles, and he shows how strong he is. Remember early on, he dropped that pass and was a little bit frustrated. This has to go a long way towards his confidence. There's one. There's one tackle he misses. There's two. There's about four tackles, and he breaks through the leg, set them up on the other side of midfield. Here's Anthony Davis trying to break one, staying on his feet. He's very close to another first down. He's inside the 40-yard line. Davis last year had a 95-yard kick return called back due to a penalty at Hawaii. That last kick return was for 49 yards, giving them outstanding field position. And this is one of the interesting ebb and flows of emotion in a game of this magnitude. Fresno State, of course, shocks them with all the points. They come down. Now they're up by nine. They understand that it's two scores to get back in it. Now they find themselves in a little bit of a comfort zone. The result, Wisconsin gets past midfield, a nine-yard run on first down. I'm always fascinated by that, the inability to maintain that level of intensity for any long period of time. Second and one, they stay with Davis, and he is met head-on by three or four white shirts, led by Maurice Rodriguez and Mark Daly. Now, this, this will bring up an interesting third down from this vantage point, Steve. How gun-shy is Sorgi now with the interceptions that he's thrown? I imagine there are some... Fans on the sideline, those sitting at home, wondering about Brooks Bollinger. He said we see an emergency situation. It's not an emergency yet. Not yet, but getting closer as we head to the fourth. As the fourth quarter here in Madison, Wisconsin greets us, so too does a burst of sunshine. What has been a rather rainy and drab afternoon in Madison. It's been a heck of a football game. But here comes Sun, and here comes Jim Sorgi. And the Wisconsin offense. A Saturnelli in motion. Sorgi from the shotgun on third down and three. Sorgi firing, nearly picked off, but it was batted away. It was looking to go to Nick Davis, and it was knocked away. Let me tell you, that was a great play by Burley, seeing that in the first place, sprinting out there as we get a chance to take a look at the game track. 
This is without a doubt the biggest play of the game. The 96-yard kickoff return just completely tilted the momentum in favor of Fresno State. Carr does his magic delivering on the money to right for the touchdown. Of course, the Bulldogs, a surprising two-for-two two on two-point conversions, which looms large, Steve, now up nine points. Wisconsin, a winner against Virginia, a loss at Oregon last week as Kirk Munden comes it away. And Bernard Kelly in one of the chance to return this one. Wow, great play. Wisconsin will down it at about the one-yard line. It's only times you see the attempt to do this, but it doesn't quite work out. Backward now gets a piece. How fortunate, how fortunate for number 18, Jim Leonard, that the ball bounces backward because if it goes to the end zone, obviously it's 20 and out. Sometimes that astrotrip can be kind to you, and certainly that young man, Kirk Munden, is happy about it. Munden will walk on a water scholarship for this season. And it's forced Fresno State back to their five-yard line. And that's where Carr and company will start. Up nine, early fourth quarter. Hands off to Josh Levi. And he's out to the eight-yard line. Bryson Thompson to stop. That's actually a huge play, and let me tell you why. One of the things that Fresno State has done here in the third quarter is their ability to run. At the point of attack, there's the double team on the nose guard. Levi able to get between. One of the things, Steve, is that in the first half, Gaines had only had 37 yards. He got 38 in the third quarter alone, which shows that despite losing their left guard to injury, the offensive line for Fresno State is playing much better. Hand off again. It's Levi again. Levi spelling Paris Gaines, and for more on that, here's Dave Ryan. That's right, Steve Gaines now in the lineup. Now he's got back spasms. Trainers tell us he should be able to come back in, but he's in a lot of discomfort, quite a bit of pain. We'll see how much he can tolerate to get back in the lineup, but they miss him right now. Dave, you're absolutely right they miss him, because one of the things here, close to your own goal line, I would think that you'd rather have your 6'1", 225-pound back as opposed to your 5'7", 195-pounder to pound out and laying out some big yards. Kelly is the man in motion. We welcome everyone to Camp Randall Stadium, a capacity crowd on hand. We're early on in the fourth quarter. Fresno State, the feel-good story of the college football season. Off wins at Colorado, at home against Oregon State, taking on their third big boy in a row here at Camp Randall in Wisconsin. And they've got a nine-point lead engineered by their quarterback, David Carr. They were trailing 20 to 10 at halftime. And now Fresno State, Mark, they lead 29 to 20. Tell me, chill out! Just kick his butt and then get up! Second down and five. Will be the upcoming 74. play. Logan Mankins, the left tackle, spiked the man in front of him. And Coach Hill wasn't very happy about it. And, and if you're going to do that, if you're going to spike the guy, don't do it right in front of the official. The second and 15 after that. Here's Carr, look to his right, throws left, threw in the heavy coverage there. Was looking for Alec Greco, and could not complete the pass. That becomes very costly for Fresno State now as they come up with a third and extremely long. And this is one of those situations where Carr is going to have to be very careful. And the pressure then shifts to Simpson, their punter, to get them out of this poor field position. See Wendell Bryan on the field. A bunch of the Wisconsin players try to get their home crowd into it. On a third and 15, Levi's a lone setback. Looks like Carr's changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Straight drop. And he will throw nowhere close to an intended receiver, Gerard Berrien. And that'll put them in a, punt, a punting situation deep in their own territory. And this is where they need that 50-yard average right here. They need him to boot one and get them out of it. Costly, costly personal foul for Fresno State. Jason Simpson a week ago was the WAC Special Teams Player of the Week. He had a 48-yard average against Oregon State. Dropped two of them inside the 20. 
saw his numbers on this afternoon. He's hunting out of his own end zone. All sorts of time, he'll get it away. It's a low punt, and it's Nick Davis at the 47. Flags fly, here's Davis turning it upfield, and he's dropped inside the 40-yard line. A big mistake. Byron Brown, reserve wide receiver, is going to get caught for the block in the back of the hold. And even though the punt was not what we had mentioned, the penalty is going to tack it on and afford Fresno State some breathing room defensively. Always tell you, if you can't see the front of the jersey, let it go. Here comes Brown, right, pushes him right in the back, and the official right on top of it. And the result is Wisconsin's not going to have as good a field position as they'd anticipated. Back at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin, and the artificial turf here is splashed in the sunshine. Now, you can see bottom of your screen, there's my car, my rental car. Oh, right here. Right, they give me a good parking spot. Is that your impound? ESPN has a lot of juice here in Madison. You can feel <laughs> park a little closer to the stadium. <laughs> On first and 10 for 32, here's Sorge. Oh, he got a man, the defender fell, and he's got Lee Evans. Play for Sorgi and Evans. Tyree Sands looked like he was the player that slipped out at the 33 of Fresno State. Evans was huge in the first half, but in the third quarter, not so much. Here he gets isolated on Sams to the outside, does the little hook move to the outside, and you can see for whatever reason, Sams, bite, Sams bites on it. I say that because it really wasn't that good of a move. The Sorgi does a nice job despite the wobbly nature of the pass. I say nice job because when a guy's that open, there's a tendency for the quarterback to want to put it right on the money. Instead, he throws a bit of a quail, and even though that means he's not going to get the touchdown, he is going to get the catch. Evans had a career game a week ago, 168 receiving yards. He's got a new career high now. Seven catches, 182 yards this afternoon. Sorgi under pressure, trying to avoid it now. Rolling to his right and throwing across his body and could not connect with Darren Charles a bit behind him. And we get an update. Sports Center in game. Here's Brian Kenny. Steve, Dennis Franchoni could have used this. Alabama, Vandy. Neil Thomas, 41 yards away. Bonk off the upright. No go. Still have the lead, 9-6, though, but you got nine and change left in that game. Steve, Todd? Okay, Brian, thank you. We get close to the winning hour around college football where all the new Eastern starts. You look at Brooks Bollinger. Watching Jim Sorge, great quarterback here this afternoon. Sorge is his third career start. Put it on the ground to Anthony Davis, trying the right side. He's just inside the 30-yard line. You sense a tenseness now in the stadium. Clock running down. Still early in the fourth quarter and plenty of time, but there's certain, a certain nervousness. The group not jumping up and down, very aware of the fact that Fresno State is no fluke. A very good football team from what out here would be considered a relatively obscure conference. Has come in here and done some damage to these Badgers. Last WAC team to visit Madison, UNLV, when they were part of the WAC in 98. Quarterback by Jeff Horton, who's the current Wisconsin quarterback coach. Here's Sorge, a little soft pass across the middle looking for Evans. Might have had their signals confused and they're fortunate in a way. That was nearly intercepted by Bryce McGill of Fresno State. Came with a blitz up the middle, and he kind of soft-tossed that ball a little bit, and now the debate here on the sidelines as to what to do. They do need a field goal, remember? I, I don't understand here why they wouldn't give this a shot. Remember, the youngster made it from 50, so we're looking at a 46-yard field goal. But for whatever reason, they're going to go for it. Are you surprised? Yes, I am. Based uh, purely on the fact they had a 50-yard earlier. Yeah. Four straight failures to convert on third down by Wisconsin. So they'll give fourth down a try. This is fourth and six from the 29. Three receivers to the left of Sorge. Gets pressure up the middle, and he's going to go down. Sorge is dropped in the backfield at all sorts of pressure. Vernon Fox is the one who came in, comes in the safety blitz, makes a great play. The graduate in sociology stuffs him on fourth down. It's about the Bulldogs on the ball when we come back. We always have to make that decision on a pure passing down. Are we going to come after him? We're going to come back in coverage. They decide to come after him with the blitz. 
Fox is able to avoid the block of Davis and drop Sorgi, a 3.46 GPA graduate in sociology, a great leader in the secondary for Fresno State. Big play for that young. That was the first sack of the day by Fresno State, and what a time to get it. Turn it over on down. Complete the pass, David Carr to Bernard Berrien. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. He has more. Dave? All right, Steve. Torn MCL for Charles Smith, one of the star receivers in his Fresno team last year with six touchdowns. You're out for a couple weeks. He returns against Tulsa in two weeks. You told me a minute ago you were surprised at the success of this team. Why is that? Because uh, the last couple, three years, we had... Um, on the road, we had to get over some adversity. And, like, we played Colorado last week, uh, two weeks ago. We came through some adversity, and we finally got over that hump. That gave us a lot of pride, and now we're just carrying over. Perfect example, down by 10 and a half. Did you think this team had this kind of comeback in it? Oh, yeah. I, I know we had a lot of, we got a lot of heart. We played for 60 minutes. So whoever we play, we play it for 60 minutes. So everybody got to know that. Steve, he's got the Silicon Valley ring from last year, the Silicon Valley Classic, and a loss. Uh, something tells me a bigger bowl's on the way for these guys. I think you're right about that, Dave, the way they're playing. And he looks serious about playing 60 minutes. He I does. Think. Looks right into the camera, doesn't he? 60-minute man. President Huey Lewis saw Fresno State now has 142 yards rushing. Here's Bernard Berrien. Knocked out of the 45-yard line by Nick Grison. Another Big Ten team possibly in trouble. More on that, here's Brian Kinney. Yes, indeed, Steve. Northern Illinois and Illinois. Chris Finland going back. Hits another senior, Daryl Hill. Northern Illinois getting within 5, 17, 12. They missed a two-point conversion, but they just recovered an onside kick. Final minute of play, down by 5, and Vanderbilt has tied it up. Getting the missed field goal from Alabama. Now it's 9-9 in the fourth, Steve. <laughs> All right, Brian. A wild day in college football. Here's third down and four. For Carr, the Bulldog. Rolling to his right. And throwing and completing. First down, able to hook up with Rodney Wright. I'm not sure there'd be enough footballs if Charles Smith was healthy with Berrien and Wright the way they're playing. Oh, I believe they'd make an exception for him. <laughs> He's a talent. Wright does a great job of sitting down in the seam of the zone. Carr rolls out and puts the ball right on the money. That's a big third down conversion for Fresno State. Take a look right here. Here's going to be the dead spot in the zone. Wright's going to sit down. Carr buys time coming to this spot. There he is, right between all of the red shirts. Good accuracy on the part of number eight. On first down and 10, Levi's the ball carrier. Down to the 33-yard line, Wendell Bryant wrapped him up. I mentioned the 142 yards earlier, Steve, and the reason I did that is because is because they have been able to take a little time off the clock, and that has taken away from Wisconsin's pass rush. They have not been able to pin their ears back and come after them because they've done a little bit between the tackles, and so credit should be given to the offensive line of Fresno State. Mankins, Michael Stovall, Sanchez, and Shea. Looked under Pat Hill, home and away. What a difference. About a 15-point difference in terms of their scoring. They've got 29 on the board today. And a very difficult place to play, and they're looking for more. Markay Davis. Well, I think Smith made a good point in his interview with Rhino, and that is, is that after beating Colorado there, that gave them the confidence. We already said, hey, you know what? We can go into some strange places and win. And you have to get a little lucky. Those that watched that game remember the quarterback Oaks for Colorado had a third and two down on the two-yard line. They're down by two points. Why not just run the ball? Instead, he rolls out, throws the interception. Ah, Fresno State able to come up with that. But sometimes you've got to be lucky. We're talking about Fresno State on the road. Don't forget they've got a 16-game home winning streak as well. As flags fly only Florida State and Oregon at a longer home winning streak. So we sort out the flag. Prior to the snap, false start by the offense. Still third down. Still third down upcoming. Gives us an opportunity to tell you about tonight's great action. College football, number 21, South Carolina against 24th ranked Georgia. First SEC game for Bulldog head coach Mark Risch. And Tennessee and Arkansas, 7th ranked Vols will get together at 9 Eastern over on ESPN2. Tennessee pounding the Orange 33-9 in their opener. And Arkansas speaks by Vegas 14-10. Mark Rick, I said, should have said. Third down and six. Screen pass out of the back to Rodney Wright. 
for the completion and the game. He's out of the 10-yard line. Ryan and Aiello made the stop. And Mark K. Davis makes this play. What a block coming from the side to enable Rodney Wright to get open. This is a play that's been terrific for them all day long in terms of that quick flanker screen. And one of the reasons it works so well is because the wide receivers block so well for one another. Take a look at number 11. Here he is right into your screen. Just white Starks completely out of the play. Knocks him out of bounds. That opening enabled Wright to find his way into the scene. That's a huge play for Fresno State now clearly in field goal range. Right, nine catches, 87 yards. Barry and eight catches, 102 yards. Now they go back to Paris Gaines. But evidently is feeling okay, or at least well enough to continue to play. Jeff Mack brought him down, and the clock continues to tick. Eight and a half left in the fourth. One of the things here that's an issue is the offensive line is really getting off and doing a number. Wisconsin seems to be on their heels. Fresno State has not been known as an attack kind of offensive line who pushes people off, but on that play, it's indicative of the fact that's exactly what's happening. Wisconsin has to hold them to a field goal history. See how they work the play clock down at 10. Fresno State's got 400 yards of offense today. Here's Keynes inching closer to the goal line. With a nine-point lead, under eight minutes to play here in the fourth. Pat Hill called it. You know, when we visited with Barry Alvarez, he, he said, you know what, this is a very good team. It's not a fluke. You don't beat teams like Colorado and Oregon State. He was very complimented with Pat Hill and what he's done with that program. So he was very free today. Third down and goal. And there's a flag in the end zone. Well, I saw the official come in and start to count. Maybe they'll pick up the flag. He started to count people as if maybe there were 12 on the field or maybe some sort of substitution. You look at the total yards of offense. Fresno State, over 400 in the game. If you're just joining us, Wisconsin had a 20 to 10 lead at halftime. 19 unanswered points by the Bulldogs here in the second half, and they're inches away from getting some more. There is no flag on the play. Third down. All that, all that time for those well, That's what I told you. I mean, he walked in and started to count, and he said 11. He said, I'm good. This is a, a nine-play drive, 61 yards, and taken almost five minutes off the clock. Coming up next on ESPN, the Bell Canadian Open. Third round coverage. Tiger Woods involved, though. We'll see him on the leaderboard after a difficult second round yesterday. His third and goal now. Handing off, waiting for the indication, and they say he's shy. Now this makes up. Josh Levi couldn't get there. Now Steve, you and I have been waiting for this, and that is, remember, this is the coach. Remember on fourth down with the field goal to tie the game, went for it. Does he want to make him go 99 yards? Does he believe that they can get the ball in the end zone? Take a look at the initial, the jump, and this is where Carr thought he had it. Watch the jump over the top. Great job by Grison from preventing him getting in the end zone. That was not a touchdown. Good call by the officials. And the issue here is that he is, oh, wow, he is, the field he is not going to chance it. He is not going to chance it. Asen Asperano is on. Asperuha receives two for three today. And he missed the 35 yarder. This one is true. Splits the uprights on the 17 yard chip shot. Certainly significant though is that the Fresno State Bulldogs lead here in Madison late in the fourth, 32 to 20. Cold one. 6.26 to play here in the fourth quarter. 23rd ranked Wisconsin trailing by 12 to Fresno State. Now you saw Fresno State not ranked again because they had their big win. The poll had come out prior to that. And we're not saying this game is over, Todd, but even should Fresno State lose this game, they lead by 12 here in the fourth. 
you'd have to think in the ESPN USA Today poll, they could have uh, quite the ranking after the first three games. And how exciting for the San Joaquin Valley to prove to everybody, to the nation on this national telecast, that yes, indeed, the Fresno State Bulldogs are for real. This is a very good football team. And if you, if you look down the rest of the season, you could make the case that they'll be favored in every other game they play. And if the three opponents that they beat all right, the first two opponents they beat, Colorado and Oregon State, and even a close you know, loss to Wisconsin. But those three teams have very good seasons the rest of the way. Well, their ranking, obviously, will improve. Nick Davis from the end zone. Out ahead of the 20-yard line. And that's where Wisconsin will start first and 10 Sam Williams on the special team stop. There you see it. Difference of the two halves. 20 to 10 lead by Wisconsin after the first half. 22 unanswered points here in the second half by Fresno State. And what a stud Bernard Berrien has been. I mean, there have been a lot of stars for Fresno State, but clearly he would have to be the guy that stands out. That kick return was huge. And, of course, all the catches that he had made. And the number of returns, not just the one that has set Fresno State up in very good field position throughout the day. Is you curious? Last time Wisconsin started the season one and two, Barry Alvarez was first year back in 1990. Here's Jim Sorgi throwing across the middle. Lee Evans, the intended receiver, I was going to say good coverage, but then the flag came. But what happens is the collision in going for the ball, he didn't, he didn't convince he didn't convince the official that he was going for the ball. Throws in the seam. Not a very good throw. Now watch the safety come up. That's Edwards. And he goes for the body first, and that's what the official sees. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Dave? Well, guys, Fresno starts with an F. The Bulldogs, of course, start with a B. So why is V on the back of the Fresno State helmets? Todd mentioned a moment ago the San Joaquin Valley. That's exactly what it stands for, the V and the San Joaquin Valley. It's an area about 150 miles around. The only Division I football program in that entire region is the Fresno State Bulldogs. And the whole area of about 5 million people combined. And Pat here really wants to get all the support and rally of that entire region behind his team. That's why the green V is on the back of the helmets. All right, Dave, thanks. So Pat Hill on the ESPN News yesterday talking about why can't we get USC and UCLA, Stanford every single year, and the California rivalries. Here's Nick Davis on the receiving end of that Shorty pass after the penalty. Shorty will pick himself up off the turn, gain of 21. Devon Banks finally brought him down, and it's a first down and then some. Maurice Rodriguez was blitzing from his linebacker position right in the face of Sorgi, and Sorgi had to hang in there and deliver the throw. You can see that Pat Hill's not very happy with the defensive charges. He goes up 12 points, and all of a sudden they're on their heels. And how many times have you seen it in football games? An offense that can't do anything for a quarter and a half or however long, then suddenly gets hot because the other team assumes that this game's in the bag. It is not. And Nick Davis, that's his first catch of the football game. We've mentioned his name a ton due to punt and kick returns. That's his first reception on offense. Anthony Davis breaking tacklers and taking people head on. He's down to the 30, and here come the Badgers. Here also comes Brian Kenny. Steve, get you back to Vanderbilt and Alabama. Neil Thomas, 27 yards away. This for the Crimson Tide. It's going to put him up on top, so 12-9. But Vanderbilt is driving. They're on the Alabama 41 with three and change left. Just under three minutes to go now. Updated and Texas overpowering North Carolina. It's 38 to 14, less than five minutes to go. Steve Todd. All right, Brian, thank you. Fresno State desperately trying to put a number in front of their name, just like the 23 in front of Wisconsin. Here's Sorgi now to throw. Across the middle, nearly picked off. It was batted away. Darren Charles was the intended receiver. Good defensive coverage by Bryce McGill. Darren, Darren Charles is an intriguing wide receiver for Wisconsin, nearly six feet seven inches tall. They want to get him the ball in situations down close to the goal line here in the red zone because of his height, because he has the ability to jump over those defensive backs. Number 87 is Charles. As you see him there next to the coach. Gets sporadic playing time. Second and ten to the 30. 
Here's Sorge, pressure up the middle, and forget it. He goes down. He's happy to hang out of the football. Bryce McGill among the many white shirts there to take Sorge down to the turf. Well, McGill is a terrific tackler for Fresno State, one of the real tough guys in the secondary. And I was surprised coming into this game, I had read that he had two sacks. Well, this is the reason. Watch number five come right here and does a great job. There's nobody there for him. And Sorge has no choice but to go down. It's only the second sack all game by Fresno State, but both have come in this pivotal fourth quarter. One was on a fourth down play. Of course, Wisconsin have turned it over on downs. That's a good football number. I always think of Harmon Wages with Paul Horner when I see number five. Here's Sorgi. Quick drop and a throw and complete. Able to hook up with David Braun. Cameron Worrell had the coverage. Barry Alvarez wants to take a timeout. That'll be Wisconsin's first. One of the reasons why that sack was so big, Steve, the clock continues to run, and now that pass that would have been a first down is not. Wisconsin is struggling. they got to get a score quickly. Roger, thank you. We look forward to third round continuing golf coverage here on ESPN. We're up in Canada. We come back on a fourth down and 11. Here's Sorgi, just the ball game right here. Sorgi throwing across the middle, nearly intercepted. And Nelly, the intended target, looked like Bryce McGill was there again for Fresno State. Jim Sorgi has been up and down. He's thrown for 246 yards, but he's only completed 13 of 28 passes. He's thrown two key interceptions, and really could it be three or four if Fresno State defenders could have hung on to the ball. And now we have a drift to the exits by the Wisconsin faithful. And again, how satisfying this must be for Pat Hill and his group. And I say this because Pat Hill, in the conversation that I had with him, one of the things that he pointed out, he said, it's easy to have the chip on your shoulder and come from behind and play from the role of underdog. He said, we need to establish a program in which we're able to deal with success. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think it's more difficult because what's going to happen now is the Bulldogs come out of this 3-0. They've got the proverbial bullseye on their back now. And every WAC team will make their season with the defeat of Fresno State. It's interesting to note, you, you know, you think of mighty, mighty Wisconsin and the Big Ten and the perennial power that they are and have been under Barry Alvarez. You got 16 freshmen on there too deep. So it's really a young, inexperienced team. We were told about their previous road game for Wisconsin for more than half of the players. That was their first ever road trip as a football team on an airplane. I mean, simply amazing. Josh Levi, the ball carrier for Fresno State, trying to milk some of that clock. Wisconsin will use their second timeout. Under three and a half to play here in the fourth. And Pat Hill, that they're they're willing to do some things here, as you is evidenced by that. The only trip that is longer for them than Wisconsin will be the trip to Hawaii. They said, "Hey, you wonder how we got the Colorado game?" And he said, "We bought the game. We had to buy four hundred thousand dollars worth of tickets to get the Colorado game. And maybe that's what it takes in the beginning to build a real big-time football program. And they seem to be doing it now. And it's another thing that's conversational here, Steve, is how high does Fresno State rise in the ranking? After defeating Wisconsin at their place, I'm sure that has to persuade some pollsters. This is a team that's very much for real. I mean, you've beaten three solid teams. And remember, Oregon State, by one periodical, their prognostication was that they are going to be the national champions. So Fresno State could conceivably, I think, jump all the way into the top ten. And, and where they've struggled on the road, two of the first three wins would be on the road right. in difficult places to play. Big-time atmospheres at Colorado and here at Camp Randall. Third down and three, and here's David Carr. Carr airing it out sideline, and incomplete. Marquet Davis, the intended receiver. As you look at the ESPN USA Today top ten in the coaches poll, it'll be a tough top ten to break into, but in terms of the victories, this is not just a win. This is a convincing win today at Camp Randall, down 20 to 10 at halftime. 
Well, one of the things that I'm looking at, and of course, you, you don't want to do the six degrees of separation necessarily as to how they apply, but Wisconsin played Oregon tough down to the wire, and Oregon State, their rival, who had defeated them last year, Fresno State whacked those guys. So if you wanted to add all that in, you could still consider them for top ten. Here's Jason Simpson punting it away to Nick Davis. Davis will let it bounce, and it will go out of bounds at about the 24. 3.11 to go. That's where Wisconsin will take over after the 39-yard punts. Get an update now from Brian Kenny. Steve, get back to Vanderbilt and Alabama, and here we go. Vandy trying to tie it up. Chuck Foligno, 36 yards away. It is no good, and Alabama fortunate with the lead. Final minute of play, Steve. All right, Brian, thank you. Stunt. You know, I wanted to say stunning developments here, but should we be stunned by Fresno State now? Well, well, again, you know, Anthony Davis has over 100 yards. Evans has a career day. Sorgi throws for 246. I mean, they certainly didn't dominate, but they did what they had to do to win. And that pass by Sorgi is incomplete. Looking to hook up with Lee Evans and all 5'11 of them. Bryce McGill had the coverage. We will have a complete wrap-up of this game. America's college football sweethearts. The feel-good story of the college football season. The Fresno State Bulldogs looking to go to 3-0. Knocking off the mighty Wisconsin Badgers here at Camp Randall. Full post-game recap coming up for you after this one is over as you tune over to ESPN News. I mentioned the line about better lucky than good and one of the issues here. If you look at Fresno State's three-game history, there have been some key plays that have really gone their way. As once again, they show that they're not in their prevent defense, continuing to blitz Sorgi from all angles. Cameron Worrell came, a strong safety. Jason Stewart was there on top of Sorgi as well for the sack. Speaking of ESPN News, did you get a, a look at the new look ESPN News yesterday? Funky. Funky. Looking good. Lots of information coming at you from all directions. Bell Canadian Open is coming your way next here on ESPN. Again, we urge you to turn over to ESPN News, and we'll have a complete post-game recap. Todd's fine analysis. We'll hear from some of the key contributors on the field as well from Dave Ryan. That's all coming up over on ESPN News. If you don't get ESPN News, only let the cable operator and scream loud. And that pass thrown away by Sorgi with 2.16 left to play here in the fourth as the sixth largest city in the state of Wisconsin is starting to get smaller. I wanted to finish my point, and that was is that, as I mentioned earlier in that game against Colorado, when Oaks threw that just unconscionable interception against Oregon State, the, the two touchdowns back-to-back -to -back for Oregon State, they come right back with a big play of their own on a long pass when Wright breaks through two tacklers. And then today, the play by Barry is absolutely gigantic. And I mentioned it earlier. Think about this, Steve. If the Anthony Davis touchdown does not get called That's right, back, who knows? You know, Wisconsin could be running downhill the rest of the day. Instead, it is called back. A lot of things have gone Fresno State's way, and you have to think that that bodes well for them. Maybe there's an omen for a huge season ahead for these Bulldogs. You mentioned Barry in. He is our Visa player of the game. 300 total yards, wow. including a highlight film worthy kickoff return for 96 yards, which you'll see on Sports Center, likely players of the week as well. Well, it's 20 to 10 at this point. Excuse me. We get a chance to see the highlights. There's one catch, and here comes the kick return. 20 to 10 at this point, and this absolutely turns the game around. It takes the crowd out of the game. It has Wisconsin on its heels. Then when they get the two-point two point conversion, conversion, it's almost as if they're saying, hey, you know what, we're going to take what we want. Berrien's play today has been magnificent. For Fresno State, they certainly look like they're going to go to 3-0. They want to be one of the big boys. And they're taking out the big boys in the big conferences, the Big 12, the Pac-10, and the Big 10. Another reason, clearly, as you just pointed out right there, you see the big conferences. That, too, should influence the pollsters. It's not as if they knocked these people off completely at home or they went into some, some small conference to get a cheap victory. These are big-time teams and big-time places. Last time Fresno State started 3-0 was in 95. They beat Northeast Louisiana, Cal, and Pacific. Not exactly Colorado, Oregon State, and Wisconsin. Here's Sorgi. This pass knocked away, was looking to hook up with Lee Evans. Tyrone Culver had the coverage, and 
Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Well, Steve, now the Fresno State win is all but official. The officials at Fresno State tell us with a victory today, the full press David Carr for Heisman campaign is going to begin. Media relations man Steve Weekland says the school has held back until now the team's third straight national TV appearance, either on ESPN2 or here on ESPN. Now, a website option is going to be launched tomorrow, part of the school's <laughs> official website, www.gobulldogs.com. A clickable field on David Carr's name. Also, some highlight tapes, interview opportunities, all kind of leaflets are going to be sent out. It looks like they are really going to push David Carr for Heisman this year. And I got a picture. And they're not able to hear Todd and I on the broadcast in Bakersfield, the 20 people watching with Melody Carr, David's wife, who was nice enough to join us earlier, live from their home out in California. Again, the Bell Canadian Open is coming up next. Simply a terrific story. You know, there was some fear. We don't root. We're impartial. Fresno State's a great story, and you got the sense, hey, maybe that great story would come to an end today here at Camp Randall, but not the case. This story is going to live on. And Pat Hill, again, you've got to give him all the credit in the world. The, the, the way he prepared the team, as Dave Ryan pointed out early on, getting up at the same time, doing all the things that they need to to get their bodies in rhythm for this game. Just a great job of preparation by Pat Hill and his staff. An update from Brian Kenny. Brian. Steve, want to follow up with some of our game day track stories. Virginia Tech rushing, of course, coming in for the injured Lee Suggs. Kevin Jones, a super freshman, 75 yards. Keith Burnell, 74 yards and 21 carries. Meantime, Jim Tressel for Ohio State. He gets a win. Buckeyes over Akron. And it looks like Mac Brown rolling now 38 to 14 in the final 40 seconds of play in that game. Steve? Brian, thank you. As we tick under 60 seconds to play here, you know, Todd, with all the attention focused on Fresno State. What about Wisconsin? Last time they started a season one and two was 1990, Barry Albers' first year. Well, I think you pointed it out. There's a lot of youth on this team, and a lot of people have to grow up in a hurry. But I still think this is a very good football team. Clearly, you've got a star runner and an absolute stud at wide receiver. Again, they ran into a buzzsaw today, a terrific quarterback, and a very opportunistic team that takes advantage of what they have to work with. They'll get Western Kentucky here next Saturday before they get into Big Ten play, starting on September 22nd at Penn State. 20 seconds left in this one. Fresno State has polished off Colorado on the road at home against Oregon State, and we thought this might be the biggest game in the program's history. Maybe it is. Certainly on the road, you'd have to say that, and Pat Hill is a happy man. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. We'll see you on ESPN News right now.